What up, Dolligars? <laughs> Go fuck yourselves. How's everybody doing? Hang on. Bear with me. What the fuck is up? Oh, got my little privacy thing going. There it is. What up, dudes? And dudettes, how are you guys? I'm waiting on Trevor's email. Normal newsboys deal. Happy New Year's, everybody. We fucking did it. 2020 is over. And I am so fucking glad. Because it was brutal and horrible. There's a shit ton of stuff to be excited about. Uh, yep, Mr. No Death Zach, one of the things to be excited about. I don't know how many of you guys are aware of this. I did a No Death Run two nights ago, I think, on Demon Souls. Very difficult to do. I fucking pulled that shit off. I feel like a million bucks. I like I like finished it and I like went into to, to the bedroom. My wife is like asleep and I wa- <laughs> Wanted to wake her up so bad and be like, I did it. I beat it with, with no deaths. Wouldn't have gone over well. Uh, anyway, what up? Yeah, RIP MF Doom. Does anyone know how he died? Do we know what happened? Um, I, I, I hate it, but whenever anyone under 50 in the entertainment business dies, I just assume it's an OD. But that's not fair. Maybe it's not. Uh, how are you guys? What's going on? What up, Doll Liquors? His wife killed him? I don't know if that's real. That's the second thing I assume. First OD, then I think Phil Hartman. Then I think... I, I have no idea what comes after that. Yeah, he died... Halloween? No, he died recently. He died like like two days ago or something. Level 5 hype train. Oh my god. Let me call Trevor and see what's going on. Because uh, he needs to send me this email. He needs to get his ass in gear. You know, I'll do it on speaker. You guys can listen while I rip him a new one. Do I like bad religion? Yeah, okay. He overdosed on pussy. Jesus Christ. Trevor. Oh. What's up, man? Are you uh, hopping on? I'm sending you a thing right now. Okay, cool. Uh, I will see you soon. Bye. See you then. So he says. So he says. Takes one week off. Now he's too good for us. No, no. He's just fried. He's frazzled. He's got a little kid. Holidays, you know, you know how it goes. Oh, there it is. Hang on a second. Opening. Open Zoom. Where, which monitor is it going to pop up in? This one. Hold up, hold up. <clears throat> Yo! What is up? What's up, man? Hang on, let me do my thing here get you on screen yo what's, what's up man up? how are you good how are you we're doing it i'm good 2021 happy new year dude happy new year's new year new news boys new news this is the year of news boys i think yeah big things are are happening I really think that this is going to be uh a big big banner year for the flagship show <laughs> um how uh, how was your break? How's the, how's chat? How's everyone doing? Chat seems good. People seem to be upset about MF Doom. That was really a fucking bummer. Are you a fan of MF Doom? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, was, I didn't know that. That, that sucked. Um, and right at the end too. I mean, I guess he died on Halloween, but like you know, he died at like, Halloween. How come it just became like news this week? They just, I mean, his family just announced it, but like, it was like right at the end of 2020. Um, you know, kind of a shitty end. Yeah, that sucks. And um, so was he kind of anonymous? Do people know what he looked like? I know he always wore the mask, but like, was his, I yeah. know we know his real name and everything, but. Yeah, I mean, I mean he's, I mean, he's definitely, most people just know him through the mask. Kind uh -huh. of thing, but there's, there's pictures of him. He's not like Banksy where he's like, no one knows what he looks like. No. Okay. No. Um, but here we are, 2021. It's uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gotta be better, right? It's gotta be. It has to be. Yeah. People I mean, saying my hair's dirty. No, it's not. It's just that my headphones broke, so I don't have headphones. I usually can keep my hair out of my eyes. <laughs> His hair's always like that. 
My hair is always dirty. Yeah. So, um, what did you get and what did you give for Christmas? Uh, so what did I get? I got a, um, I got an Oculus. Okay, cool. Uh, Oculus, the, uh, the new Oculus that uh, hasn't arrived yet. I guess it arrives on Monday. Cool. Uh, someone says, Trevor, was Matt Bronger talking about you on his new stand-up special? Yes, he was. He I, was? I just, yeah, he does a whole bit. Um, yeah. What does I, he I, say? I, so I saw him yesterday. That's funny. Oh, really? Well, he lives in my neighborhood. I didn't talk to him. I see him all the time in my neighborhood because he walks through my – because I live right by the park. Yeah. And it's actually gotten to the point where now when I see him, I will like just like not – I'll, I'll like move on because mm. we've had so many like awkward walk and talks like, oh, hey, we're walking the same direction. And it's like, I don't know Matt that well. I'm not trying to like have a, a big, long catch up with him. And I, I think he's the same. I think we're both just like, we, we don't need to do the. You guys never liked each other. <laughs> I love Matt. I think he's great. I just, yeah, we have nothing to say anymore. I haven't, I haven't yeah. like had a real conversation with him in a decade. Anyway, so what it's happened? Also that, it's also that nobody has done anything for a year, so right. there's nothing to talk about. Yeah. Like, what are you watching? Are you watching The Crown? Yeah. Do you like The Crown? Yeah. You know? um, no, I wrote a part for him um, in my show, and uh, like it was like a like he was in like he it was like a, a arc that he was in for like, like five or six episodes. So I wrote this character and I like asked him to play it. And then he does a bit about um, how he was all excited. And then when, well, I don't want to give away the bit or whatever we got, but give it away. Uh, basically his experience. Uh, like, well, basically um, he was like, I guess I called him and I was like, I wrote this part specifically for you. And then uh, we went out to eat and I was telling him about the character and I was just like uh, saying like, he's like the biggest loser in the world. It's funny though, cause he's got, he's like dropped a uh, ton of weight. He's like in good shape now. He's, you know, he's not like old Matt. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but also he is, it's a really funny bit because he couldn't like, if he screwed up a line, he couldn't not swear. Oh, like, and it was a kid's show, and all of his scenes are with these kids, and he just kept, like, cursing continuously throughout the... <laughs> Dude, that's <laughs> so... like Sam. So remember when we were shooting Whitey's Kids, literally, guys, I'm telling you, every single time Sam missed a line, which is, like, probably every three oh. lines, you know? Which is, like, by the way, that's not a dump on Sam. We were all fucking our lines up all the time. He would go, he'd get a line wrong, and he would go, Fuck! In fact, it's funny, if you ever watch him play Warzone, every time he dies, it's the exact same fuck. He can't help it. It's completely involuntary. And so we were doing the, the we were doing Whale Tail. By the way, you're really, really lagging. You're like frozen on my end. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I see you're you're good Hold now. Hold on, let me see if I can I'm good now. Well, you're like audio's out of sync and shit. I don't know, something's going on. Yeah. But but we were doing whale tail, so he's sitting in he's sitting in a rowboat with like these three little kids actors, and I remember I was like behind the camera, I was like, I promise you, he's gonna drop f bomb after f bomb after f bomb in front of these kids, and he did. Like I, I mean, he was constantly like, fuck, sorry, fuck, oh, sorry. It was just like this like snowball of profanity. It was fucking great. But the thing is, in that scene, we have the kids yell, "Holy shit!" Oh, so it's totally. It, no one cared. Yeah. 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 Um, which is what we used at the end of our production cards. Holy shit! Uh, we were so happy yeah. with that. Someone, someone is saying that I'm very, uh, very low. Very low? I don't say something. Hi, my name's Trevor. How are you? I'll put you up a little bit, but I don't think you're very low. I think that person's full of shit, man. That was me just riffing. Oh, okay. All right, I boosted you even more. Um. So yeah, I got uh. So I got an Oculus. I got like a nice jacket. I got um, a, uh, and what did I buy people? I bought, um, mostly just bought stuff for my kid. I got him all the Star Wars stuff because he's obsessed with Star Wars. So um, That's fun when your kid starts to get obsessed with shit that you can relate to, that you used to be obsessed with. That's rad. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird because like we're both like, it, it's not like I was like, here, watch Star Wars. Like he just kind of gravitated to uh -huh. it. Um, and I was like, all right, I mean, you know, uh, and, uh, but he's obsessed with like the same characters that I was. As Which ones? 
He, lo- he loves Boba Fett. I was going to say Boba Fett. I feel like that's the easiest character to get obsessed with. Yeah, but he loves stormtroopers. So now he has all these stormtroopers, and and I got him a purple kyber crystal, which he was that was like the big hit of of uh, Christmas. He was obsessed with that. What's a purple kyber crystal? So you get these lightsabers, and then the, you get you can buy different kyber crystals to put in the lightsabers, and it changes the color of the lightsaber. Uh. So purple's his favorite color, and he's always he's had red and you know other colors, but he's always wanted a purple one. So I, I found a purple one for him. Like that. So you uh, didn't have any brother, so you didn't really get to do massive lightsaber battles and shit like that. I mean, did you do that with, with your sister? Yeah, I mean, I treated my sister as a brother. Whether she well, wanted to or not. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean I've talked about us fighting yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, she's always sort of been like a brother to me. Kind of yeah. <laughs> so. Um, but it, what did you get and what did you give? I gave Sarah a record player. Um, which has been cool. Like, you know, I never, I, I never, uh, collected vinyl as an adult because I had so much vinyl as a teenager that I'd collected from all the punk shit. And then, mm-hmm. did I ever tell you this? I went to college for my first semester of college. And when I came back for winter break, my brother and all his little punk rock friends, he had them over and he was like, go into his room, take all of it, take it all, take all of it. So all, they wow. went through all my shit and took it. And I never had the heart to, to start over again but this year i was like fuck it we'll, we'll do it so we're we it's been really fun we like bought a record player and then we've been going to like record shops and doing all the whole deal it's been cool you can go to record shops like, yeah they're open yeah wow i know it's a little sketch but whatever um i guess that's like the biggest risk i've taken it's going to record shops but that's not bad, I eh, guess. I'll think. It's not great. Yeah, that's right. You are watching everyone at home. We're at 999 viewers. Not bad for not bad. being off two weeks. You know, yeah. we'll, 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 I, I wouldn't call it rookie numbers. We'll get it up. I actually like, thought we were going to have uh, way, way lower tonight because it's a holiday and people are all traveling and everything like that. But. I thought that, but on the other hand, it is us. You, you, <laughs> oh. I, was, I, didn't, I, I didn't know how that was going to play out. Um, so here we are. We broke a thousand. All right. All right. We this did is, it. Now it's his voice. No, but I had one uh, one interesting uh, gift thing happen. We should. Go ahead. Oh man, your connection sucks, no, no, go ahead. man. Should I log off and then and then send you another thing and maybe change my uh, Wi-Fi? Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a better alternate is it that Wi-Fi? Bad? It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. You're choppy as hell. I can try. Let me try this. Oh, I will. I will. I'll be back. Okay, cool. Oh, all right, hang on, dudes. Here we go. Um, I guess I'll tell chat. I'll tell you guys this story because uh, he's gone. Yeah. So it's a little personal, but and and also some people would probably get pissed at me telling this story, but fuck it. So my, <laughs> my grandfather sends uh, he sends a check to all of his grandchildren every year. Uh, and he always has, and it's great, and I I look forward to it, and it's like a nice little end of the year treat um it's not like a mega amount of money but it's like more than a hundred bucks so it's like it's nice um and uh this year i got a card i got no no check i'm like oh man maybe he's uh maybe he's not doing checks this year I, i i don't know so uh i call one of my brothers i'm like did grandpa send you a send you a check this year he's like yeah i'm like no shit Call another one. I'm like, did grandpa send you a check this year? He's like, yeah. I'm like, no shit. So I fucking call my grandfather and he fucking, I chat with him for like 10 seconds. Then he fucking, he goes in the middle of our conversation, goes, Zach, I got to go to the bathroom. And then just gets off the phone with me. And I'm like, what the fuck? So then I email someone else in the family of like, hey, what's up with the checks? I, I'm worried that maybe a check got lost or something like that. And it's okay if I didn't get one. I just don't want any, anything to happen to his money. And they're like, no. Nope. Um, no, no. He, you, you didn't get a check this year. No explanation. No check. <laughs> Everyone else gets one. What the fuck? I got some crazy beef going with my own grandpa. I don't even know why. Anyway. I'm on the naughty list. It's fucking crazy. Someone says, you're rich, Zach? Dude, it's 2020. I'm not. Uh, no, I'm hurting just like everybody. I'm not rich. Anyway, um, what did you do? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's like I haven't been calling enough. I, I have no fucking idea. 
I am. I do live the farthest away from everybody. Maybe that's part of it. Um. Anyway, how are you guys? No expl. No explanation, dude. No explanation. He wants a chair. Could be. I got it. Whoop. Oh. Hang on. I, I see. I see it now. Here it comes. Here it comes. All right, and open the Zoom. Oh, I need to update my Zoom, it says. Fuck that. I'm fucking crazy, dude. I don't update shit. Update a bit later. Hey, sorry. Oh, we're still on the phone. Uh, Hold on. Did, did you hear my story about my grandfather? I did. Isn't that <laughs> fucked up, dude? How do you still have a grandparent? <laughs> that, that was the blow thing that blew my mind. I was like, Zach still has a grandparent. <laughs> no, I only got one. I only got one. How old is he? He's in his 90s, dude. He's old. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, was, that was the it, big dude, takeaway wait, from people. He's in his 90s, that. so that, may, that can't be right. I guess that's right. 50s. Yeah, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Um, what were you going to say? I'm all out of grandparents. Yeah. It happens. Uh, um... Did you have cool grandparents? Did they do anything amazing with their lives? They, uh, yeah, one of them, well, one of them was a pre uh, preacher for his whole life. Um, so and no. Then, <laughs> then the <laughs> other, and then the other was like, uh, like owned a big lumber company. Uh huh. So, so, uh, yeah, they cut down a heap. One of them cut down a shitload of trees in his life. <laughs> One brainwashed people, the other slaughtered the environment. Hell yeah. yeah um, yo, Principal Rolls donated 50 bucks. Thank I should have done this while you were doing the thing. Thank you, Principal Rolls. Uh, that's part of my no death run celebration. I'll have everyone know. Oh, yeah. Congrats thank on that. You, thank you. Thank you so I, much. Thank you I so much. Yeah. Doll Liquor, GFY donated. Thanks, buddy. Chris Dickless donated. Oh, all right. He says, I turned them on to the Locust by mentioning them in one of the streams. They rip. All right, cool. Can you add? And then he says, can you add me on LinkedIn? Uh, no, that's not going to happen. Are I you on LinkedIn? No, I'm not on LinkedIn. Drip Dinkus donated five bucks. Said congrats. Peanut Town donated a hundred bucks. And he says, you fucking did it, Zach. Congrats. So Peanut Town was my Demon Souls coach. Peanut, ah. I fucking love you. Thanks, buddy. We did it together. We share this award together, you and me. You, you're my manager. Except that you're keeping the hundred dollars. Yeah, well, the movies. It's going to the movie. So, yeah, yeah, the movie. The movie. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll I'll do the rest later. There's more to come. But that, that's exciting. This is the month that we're going to start recording the film. Oh, I'm so excited, dude. We are in the month. We're going to be doing it in January, and then um, and also. Civil War on Drugs is going to be uh, available on Amazon Prime probably within the next two weeks. I feel bad because I feel like we've made that promise a bunch on Newsboys. I know, but well, here's the thing. I almost, I almost got it up before the uh, end of the year, but um, everybody, when we, when we put up stuff on the YouTube channel, everybody's uh, talking about it being uh, inter interlaced. Mm. Is it so still, that, didn't we fix that? I thought we fixed a lot of that. Well, that's I, I just want to I want to do it right. And the other thing is um, we never had closed captioning for it. Mm. So we're getting the closed captioning done right now. There's a company that does that. Yeah. So there's just a couple things to, to release technical the hurdles. Yes. And we're talking about putting a song on the end. Kind of right on. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you wrote like a new song. I hope this isn't spoiler territory. Do you want to leave this for. So Trevor wrote a new song. That'll go at the end over the credits of Civil War on Drugs. So if you've seen the movie, but you want an extra little treat at the end, that there'll be something there. I don't even know what the song is. Yeah. Well, it's like, um, I mean, it's not, it's not even that, it's not that funny. It's actually just like a, a Civil War era song kind of talking about the plot of the film. Kind Fun. of thing. Yeah. So it's just, it's, <laughs> it's, we needed something to put there because we've never actually done a full credits for it. So as uh. I was compiling the credits, it was like, there's this blank space here. So. <laughs> So that's what. Wait, really somebody cool. says, Trevor, get a hair tie, please. I know. I could. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I was going to do this tomorrow, but Midnight Cowboy Buck is here and Ron Jine is here. So I, I, I feel like it would be rude of me not to mention it. But like people pay. So for my Demon Souls, guys, just indulge me to talk about this for a beat. Midnight Cowboy Book offered $1,000 if I would do it. And he paid. 
He fucking came through with a thousand bucks when I did the no death run. Rangina came through with a thousand bucks for the no death run. Fucking amazing, dude. And then, hang on, other people fucking came correct. Hot Dog Water Burps donated 300. Sam's Butt donated 500. Uh, Baked wow. Potato did 150. Twerkin had been donating all along, like every boss, even on the attempts. She didn't have to. He, I always think Twerkin's a girl, but I know it's a guy. He didn't have to do that, but he did. Def Jam just now donated 50 for No Death Demon Souls. This Demon Holy Souls shit. No Death Run is like the most financially lucrative thing we've ever done, dude. You I know think what it's we gonna should be do? over three thousand dollars from this from this No Death Run. All to the movie. I'm fucking stoked. So when we thank uh, you guys. when the movie's coming out and you know it, it, we do like interviews about it and people will be like, how did you fund this movie? We should be, we should say like, well, Zach did a No Death Run <laughs> yeah. on Demon Souls and just watch like the interviewers be like, what? Okay, yeah. incredible. Hold on and hang on's been donating a lot. Just came in with the no death. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. And secrets. Hang on. Let me let me finish this. Se- secrets 5942. Thank you for the 20, buddy. Uh, X Law Talking Guy. Thank you so much. Uh, Helen Killer for 15. Simon for 20. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. You guys are really starting this year off right. Fucking love it. Um, okay. We should also say a, a thing that's happened is uh, uh, you're watching Newsboys coming to you live from Hollywood, California, <laughs> the COVID capital of planet Earth. Yeah, I'm, I have a cough right now. Oh, shit, really? <laughs> for real. I, and Can I wanted see? to get, I've been trying to get tested for a week and a half. You can't get tested here. It's like, it's like crazy. All the- I wouldn't. I wouldn't even do that because, like, you have to. Um, you'd have to be in line with all, all these people. Like, you know, they say in San Bernardino County, which is just like a, a county or two over, uh, one in four people have it. Dude, one that's in four. insane. That's yeah. fucking crazy. It's fucking nuts. Like, ev- everyone has it. Basically, you just gotta you're, like. You're gonna get it. Yeah, I'm staying. I'm not. I'm staying in here. I'm staying. Well, you've got here. your crazy astronaut space helmet and shit. But what about um, what about Amy? I mean, is she as crazy as you are about this stuff? Does she go out? No, no. I mean, she's not as crazy as, as me about it. But she, but she's very. We're both very safe. That's kind of like, what I always wonder, though. It's like, if if you're totally rigid, but someone in your household is lax, then that means you're lax. Like. It's true. No, she uh, we she doesn't go out. Neither of us go out. Um, the, our only weak spot is that um, uh, our kid does go to school. Yeah. Fuck. But it, but it's a very small like his classroom size is only six kids. Yeah. So it's very contained, and it's like temperature checks and emails constantly about like other parents, and, and yeah. so it's. But that's that's my uh, that's my big weakness here. Yeah. And I mean, those temperature checks, they can really only tell you after the fact, you know? It's I know. Like, you're, yeah. I know. Um, um, but they're still not even really sure how much kids can transmit it. That's the other thing. How could they not transmit it, though? Because they've got little mouths and little noses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, oh, Big D Liquor says 500 people will just have to give out their stimulus and the movie's done. That's a great point. That's a really great so, point. Uh, that's a good news, boys thing. So everyone's getting uh, government cheese. We're all getting money How from the government. How much is everyone getting? I forget. Is it six hundred or two thousand? It was six hundred. Then it was two thousand. Then it was. And it was six hundred. And then Trump said six hundred was pathetic and it needed to be more. And then the Democrats were like, "You got it. Let's go." And then all the Republicans had to be like, "Well, uh, uh, no, dude." Like, yeah, they're like, "They're supposed to be a Republican." <laughs> yeah. So yeah. everyone says six hundred. Yeah, dude. 600. How is six hundred supposed to do anything for anybody? Just, just only use two dollars a day, and that should get you through the year. I guess so. Not even. I mean, (laughs) it wouldn't wouldn't even. (laughs) It's insane. Yeah. I mean, how? I mean, they they basically just uh, we have to just do a universal income. You know, it's. Don't you think within ten years, if it's not implemented, it's going to be like the biggest issue? It'll be like the healthcare debate four years ago. It'll be like or six years ago. This is why I was Yang Gang from the yeah, beginning. I'm like you. I was like, this is the guy. This is the only guy actually talking about what's important yeah. right now. Like everyone else is like, you know, kind of just talking about like whatever is popular to talk about. But Andrew Yang, he's saying he's saying like, look, the government, the, co- the the economy doesn't work anymore. Right. You know, it doesn't work. It's broken. So we you can't have you, you can't have everybody unemployed, or then everything's going to be on fire all the time. You know, like people are just going to be like, you know, uh, wrecking the place. Do you think so? You will, got. Do you think there will be like an inversion of, 
like secessionist ideas. Like right now, it seems like the secession talk is from the right, right? And I know it's not very, Mm -hmm. I know the right doesn't want to secede, but like that's where like most of that kind of attitude of like, fuck this, let's, let's, you know, let's leave kind of comes, seems to me like that's more at home on the right than the left. I wonder if UBI becomes like, you know, as we get closer and closer to UBI, if it'll begin to be the left that's like, fuck that, I'm not paying for those lazy assholes. Like I could see people in like, Vermont being like, why am I paying for Mississippi? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't get why we all hang out together. Um, <laughs> well, May McDonough, thanks for all the gifted. My Lord, 25. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I just I just feel like, look, we're, we're obviously, it, you know, it, how many elections have we had where it literally comes down to basically a tie? You know, yeah. I mean, and it doesn't by a, a couple million votes, you know, but right. it's still like it's like 49 percent to 51 percent. If we it's keep crazy, we're two different countries. Yeah. Like there's two different sets of ideologies here. So I don't get why we all have to hang out. I don't know. I mean, and, and, and you know, let everybody you, we should all we should be two different countries that are best friends. We're two different countries that are best friends. We should be. We, we should, should be, be two different two different countries that are best friends. Fuck England. You know, like right. we'll be we'll be best friends. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and uh, and 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 then the quirkiness of each other, because, you know, well, uh, you know, the, the, the people on the right could be those ah those those cucks over on the left. But, you know, but uh, uh, but I, I can say that. But you can't say that about right. them because right. they're my brother. And yeah. then and then all the. Uh, <laughs> And all the people on the left could be like, ah, oh, those abortion hating uh, people on the Gun-toting, right. Gun-toting, yeah. yeah. But don't you say that about them. Right. I can say that about them because I I would die them. for those gun-toting cousin fuckers. Exactly. Instead yeah. of being angry at our differences, let's just like, <laughs> let's just, you know, agree to be, let's get, let's still be friends, but not be roommates. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. That's a perfect way to say it. It's like, yeah, it's like people that need to get divorced. It's like, they're like, yeah, I love my wife, but I don't want to be married to her anymore. It's like, okay, yeah. get divorced. Oh, my goodness. Um, we're going to succeed is surrounded on all sides. Yeah. Um, just found out Rob Thomas is Wendy's royalty, and his grandfather, Dave Thomas, made him famous. Is that true? That would be, that would make 2021 off to such a fantastic start if that was true. Can you Google that? Can you see if that's real? There's that, no way that's true. That can't be right. That would be, no one would stop talking about that if that was true. <laughs> Rob Thomas related to Dave Thomas. The internet's just going to say, no, you idiot. <laughs> no, he's not. Okay, all right. We got fucking <sighs> trolled, dude. A bummer. That would have been rad. Rob Thomas grew up flipping burgers saying, oh, it's a hot one. All right. Oh, so let's, okay, so here, do me a favor, man. I know you know more about this than me. Brief me on Alec Baldwin's fake Hispanic <laughs> wife. Because I, I, Sarah was starting to go into it, and I was like, I don't know anything about this. <laughs> so Alec Can you Baldwin. show photos of her and all this stuff? Because pretend I'm an alien, because I, I really don't know this story. Yeah. Well, you know Alec Baldwin. Uh, I sure master, know Alec Baldwin. Master impressionist Alec Baldwin. <laughs> yeah. From his flawless Donald Trump impression. Well, why do you say that with such dripping sarcasm? Do you think it's a bad impression? I, I thought it was like fine. I think, it, I think it's a horrible impression. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it's terrible. Can we do a poll? Does everyone think it's terrible? Am I am I like all out to see here? I have no fucking idea. It's like when you see people like uh, Anthony Tamanek, like, you know. Well, Anthony's uh, amazing. Yeah, there's so many good impressionists out there but Sarah live just like celebrities so they it's not they wouldn't like let one of their people try one or like you know or hire somebody who's like good at it they're just like oh we'll get the guy from uh the credit card commercials um i'm looking up his wife so anyway alec baldwin All right, there's has a, baldwin. a wife who uh has always been like claiming that she's spanish and, like, and she's she has, way like, young right she's like 30 or something like that well, yeah, he's rich. Yeah, okay. And they have a shit ton of kids, too, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so he's got this, uh, you know, and she's claiming to be Spanish. And she's like, she's doing like cooking segments on the on the Today Show. And she's saying things like, she's like, then you chop the, oh, I don't know how you say. Can you find oh, that is- clip? Can we go down this road together? I'd well, love to see this. Yeah. But she's like, how you say cucumber or something like that. So uh-huh. she's like laying it on thick. 
And then it turns out she's from Boston. Oh you know, so she's like one of those. Who is that uh, white lady that was pretending to be black? Rachel Dolezal. Yeah, she's like one of uh, those people. Let's check uh, these results. I know they're going to be overwhelmingly negative, but let's see. What is the awful? Point? Is it eighty-one percent? Fantastic? Is it eighteen <laughs> percent? Yeah, it's a terrible. <laughs> I, mean, all I think it's amazing that thirty-seven people think it's fantastic. I guess I didn't really give them another option with the wording. <laughs> Um, I also right. love that Trump called him Alex Baldwin. And remember he tweeted, he's like, Alex Baldwin's impression of me. Oh That's God. funny. He was funny. Yeah. Trump was funny. I think Alex funny. Baldwin's funny. I mean, I, I, I'm oh, not I a 30 Trump. Rock. Oh, Trump. Oh, dude, I'm I'll, I'll miss funny. laughing at Trump real Trump bad. Trump was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, oh, you know what? It's my thing again. I can't share. So I can't. Oh. What the but, fuck? Uh, it's your Zoom but, meeting. I don't understand it. It's, I have to up. <laughs> I have to up. Uh, up are you the, using Safari program. or Firefox mm, or Chrome or what are you using? Chrome. I'm on Chrome. You're on Chrome. Yeah. That's fucking weird. Um. Well, all right. Let me do a couple of quick thank yous here because the money is coming in. DJ Carson donated a hundred dollars. He says, "Do y'all like candy canes? I've got these little leftover candy canes. I'll send you some fucking candy canes." Oh, and congrats on the no death run. Thanks, buddy. Guard the Bunny donated $50. He says, I missed the soul stream, but was there in spirit. None of my friends thought you could do the no death run, but I believed. Guard the Bunny. God bless you. Uh, Hig Boner donated five. Says, this is for my anti-mask brother-in-law. Okay. One Leaf Left donated 50. Says, I wish I could have been there for the no death runs, but you did all the souls weren't players proud that day. Much respect. Thank you, my friend. Prop Like It's Hot donated, says, I live in Georgia and me and the whole family have COVID, so we quarantine. I'm sorry to laugh as I read this. It's just that me and the whole family have COVID hit me. Uh, so we quarantined over Christmas. Bright side, I started wrecked. Love the montage of Zach trying to break into a suitcase full of dildos. Thanks, bud. And then Hellcat Curl, my benefactor, my sponsor, my lover, donated $100 and said, good job on the no death run. Here's what I promised. You fucking angel. Thank you so much. The Hellcat Curl and Hellcat Curl's wife are... Uh, Two of my very favorites. Okay, done. So, uh, yeah, what else happened in the news? So, anyway, so, yeah. Oh, so that's tell the, me more that, about her. So, she, how did she get caught? Uh, I think Amy Schumer, um, like, put up a... Amy Schumer just had a kid, and, and she put up, like, a picture... Uh, uh, oh, oh, so, like, uh, Alec Baldwin's wife, um, I think, put up a picture of her, like, because she just had a kid. So, it's, like, three months afterwards, and she looks incredible okay. like you know she she looks like she never had a kid you know and uh and then amy schumer like made fun of her for posting that okay you know and she basically posted the same picture and pretended that it was her amy okay. schumer did. and so then uh the fake spanish wife uh all of a sudden attacked amy schumer which w and was like that's body shaming me it's complimenting uh, you yeah, yeah. Well, she was like, she was doing that thing where she's like, just, you know, when you say that I'm skinny and beautiful, that hurts just as much. Like, she basically oh. pulled one of those things, you know, Dude, everybody had. That is everybody. the most insufferable behavior. This, like, yeah. phony posturing self righteousness for attention is just despicable. I fucking well, it's hate everybody it. wants to be, like, a victim somehow. Oh. Like, so you've got to find, you've got to find your angle. Yeah. And so, like, that was, she was like, I'm being, I'm a victim because I'm so beautiful. And when people notice that, that hurts. Um, so she was doing that. And then somebody called her out. Like, they're like, fuck you. You're not even Spanish <laughs> like that. And then it blew up. Like, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Sarah told me that she made a video where she didn't use an accent, where she was yelling at Amy Schumer with no accent. And then everyone's like, yeah, I think that's it. What yeah. are you doing? Like, she outed herself. So what's crazy about this is this means Alec Baldwin had to know, right? He, he surely oh, yeah. knew that she was a big phony. What the yeah. fuck? He's yeah. very famous. Like, did he think they were gonna get away with this forever? Was he like they they did, did for a long time until Amy Schumer stopped that shit? I guess we all know she Amy Schumer a dead of gravity. Amy Schumer, Amy Schumer, Hannibal Burris turn. <laughs> Remember when Hannibal Burris got Cosby in jail? Yeah, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he did it in such a great way. He's like, also, he rapes women. He just said it like that was like that was it. It was great. Yeah, uh, dude. Oh my God. Um, it's crazy to think that Bill Cosby's in jail right now. I know. Aunt Becky just got out of jail. Aunt Becky? 
Who's yeah. on Becky? From Full House? Oh, oh, I was thinking of Roseanne. Yeah. Is it Becky of Roseanne? Yeah, Sister Becky. Uh, okay, got it, right. Yeah. Um, oh, she did? All right. Yeah, so she's out. Now her husband's got to go in. Really? Uh, yeah, the, they, 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 don't, they don't have to go at the same time. The like, tag team? Uh, yeah, because they still, they still got that fucking kid that got him in trouble. Oh <laughs> Someone's got to take care of Olivia Jade. Oh, my God. I mean, do you think Aunt Becky is like... Obviously, she's got to... She's going to be ashamed for the rest of her life to a degree. But do you think like her life will be that much different post-jail than pre-jail? Do you think she'll still be going to the golf course with her with her friends and having mimosas? Yeah. And like, everyone's like, I can't believe you went to jail. That's so crazy. And then it's yeah, over. She'll, yeah, she'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, she won't get to be in like, she might not get to be in those like shitty Hallmark movies anymore. Yeah, yeah she's not going to yeah. act anymore, but she doesn't need to. She's she so doesn't rich. matter. That's what never made sense about this in the first place. They're like, like they have like five hundred million dollars. Like you know, um, they're like the guy. He he does that Massimo or whatever yeah, Massimo that brand is. something. Massimo. Yeah. So like, that, that's what I never understood of like why even cheat for your kid to get into college. Like the kid doesn't have to go to college. Like, you know, you got And the kid didn't even want to go to college. She didn't want to go to college. She got $500 million. She doesn't need to go to college. It's stupid. Uh. Now you got to go to jail. <laughs> yeah, you went to jail. So, And the kid didn't even go, right? I think she went no. for like a couple months and then dropped out. Yeah, the oh, kid wow. went. And then and all she was doing was like Instagram stuff. And, uh, and she was making more money doing that. And now the kid can't do Instagram because everyone thinks the kid's stupid. Because she is. Uh, cause she couldn't get into, <laughs> she couldn't get into college with rich parents. No, no. Hang on. Hang on. Now, before you start firing shots at the kid, <laughs> they were trying to get her into some very elite schools that I would not have gotten into. What school was it? Was it USC? I don't know. Yeah. I think it was USC. Yeah, probably. That's a, that's not an easy school to get into. I, I think. I, I went there for a semester. I don't know. Okay. Well, I guess any knucklehead. Sure. Yeah, my great yeah, You're not that smart. <laughs> <No>. um, <laughs> wait, somebody said, this is funny. Somebody said, read some, some Miss March interviews tonight. Or reviews, not interviews. Read Miss March reviews. Oh, that would be good. That, that's actually a good idea. We've gotten a lot of great donations. I feel like it could be, you know, um, we could set it up as a reward thing where every time we hit a certain mark, we have to read the entirety of a Miss March review and just take our medicine. I feel like we got to find like really scathing ones. Though. That won't be hard, dude. I yeah. think they're all pretty scathing. Yeah. I don't think we could find a good one. Yeah, probably not. Um, the uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Did you see uh, that uh, the kid Aunt Becky's kid uh, went on um, uh, Will Smith's wife's show? OK. And she was, it was, I mean, it's just, it's just, I have nothing about it. It was just funny because she's like, she's like <laughs> to trying to what? like, to say like, you know, that she was wrong and, uh, you know, that's it. Oh. I just, I just love that whole thing. Yeah. Like a little apology to her. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So she could be on Instagram. Yeah. I watched uh, Wonder Woman 1984. Okay. Chat was telling me that that's like the worst movie ever. Is it? I thought it was far-fetched. <laughs> So why is it in 1984? What's the deal? There's, that's the thing. There's no reason for it to be. In she's just in the 80s, but she's the same age. Well, she's she's like a. Does a she god. go back in time or something? No, it's like so. The first one was in like the 40s. Oh, the right. first Wonder Woman. Oh yeah, yeah so, okay. So now it's like 40 years later, and she's in the 80s. But it has no. There's no. It has nothing to do with the 80s at all. And like, she has no, an age because wait, is she a god or is she an alien? What's Wonder Woman's deal? She's like a god. She's a god. Yeah, an Israeli god apparently. I don't think she's Israeli. In she the just story. has the accent. They're just like she's no, got she, an accent. Yes. Let it go. Yes. it's like Schwarzenegger. Like, it's like he's not Austrian. He's American, but he just talks like that. We we sent her to the classes. They couldn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. I um, guess some actors they're just like they're, it's they're worth it. Okay, everyone just get over it. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's no there's no like '80s music in the whole movie. Are you kidding? Is no. that part of the whole point of setting it in the 80s is you get to capitalize on that shit? No. Oh <laughs> There's one scene God. where they make fun of fanny packs. That's about it. Oh, my <laughs> it's God. It's like... Uh, and then, uh, did you watch anything cool over the break? Well, I watched that movie Mother last night, which I fucking loved. It's the Bong Joon-ho movie. It's like the guy that made Parasite. Um, I thought it was like the greatest. And then is that I watched... the one with Jennifer Lawrence in it? No, that's Darren Aronofsky's mother. That's also a cool oh. movie. I like that a lot. Um, 
And then I watched... Have you ever seen Bicycle Thieves, the old Italian movie? Yeah. I'd never seen it until yesterday. I watched it yesterday. Uh, Like the one that they show in film school. Yeah. I was like, this is the most incredible movie. It's like everything comes from this. Like Uncut Mm -hmm. Gems is like just a remake of Bicycle Thieves kind of. It's so cool. It's just, I I love it. It's considered like one of the greatest movies ever. It it, it really is. (laughs) Um... Anyway, I don't know. What else have I watched? I feel like I must have watched some bad shit, too. Right now, I'm watching Wake, Wake and Fright. I don't know. What did you watch? Anything good? Um, I watched, yeah, I watched Wonder Woman. I watched, um, is that all I watched? Oh, I, I got real sucked into this Heaven's Gate documentary. Is that good? Like, is it on HBO? I love it. Well, I love cults. It's my Me favorite Me too, dude. I'm right there with yeah. you. Um, so, it's like, it's, it's. I watched like five episodes in one night. Like, it's wow, so good. it's a yeah. doc, right? It's a doc series. Yeah, it's a doc okay, series. Okay, cool. I gotta watch that. I've gotta so watch good. it. Did I ever tell you about that cult show I was pitching with my buddy Sam? I think so. I was so excited re- re- about this. I thought I thought we were gonna sell this thing too. But here, the premise was, you know, like if you have a loved one who's in a who's in a cult, mm-hmm. and there's like a com, it was like a comedy meets like Twin Peaks. It was like a weird, bizarre kind of a comedy. Was the with the tone. If you have a loved one in a cult, you have like three options uh, if you want them to come out of the cult. Like option one is like they just get bored of the cult and they leave of their own accord, which like very rarely happens. Option two is you could have like an intervention and like beg them to come back, which like pretty much never works. And option three, and this is a real thing, is they have um, cult recovery programs where they will basically infiltrate the cult, kidnap your loved one out of the cult, de-brainwash cool. them over the course of like you know however long it takes and then like return them to you for a fee they they like kidnap these people from the kidnapper so i was like that's the show like the premise yeah. is it's like the a-team it's like the small family business like very dysfunctional drug addict people whose job is to just like go kick in the doors of these cults like infiltrate them however they can and, like steal these people out of the cults and deprogram them i thought it was going to be so fucking easy to sell that show nobody nobody bought that shit huh but Anyway, yeah, it sounds good. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, anyway, so oh, this, I, is, this is great. It's fantastic. And so I've been like looking up. At, um, I've been trying to find like uh, Heaven's Gate shirts and stuff. Yeah. Like, because now I'm like really uh, uh, like, and there's also, whenever you watch one of these things, you're like, what if they're right? You know. What if the, what if the saucer did leave? What if there was a saucer? Well, you know, Sirhan, my band, right? The first track of our of our CD is the Heaven's Gate guy, like his just like him speaking over the music about yeah. like, yeah, it's pretty cool. What's um, cool about him though is that he wasn't trying to scam anyone. It wasn't like John you know, Applewhite. The, is that what he's called? Yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these, um, like cults, like the guy knows it's bullshit, uh-huh. and he's like trying to. And it's usually for sex or for you know money or stuff like that like this dude believed this shit like a hundred percent do you think and, jim jones believed it uh yeah i do i think jim jones did believe it i don't but think like, he did but i think he'd just been like i've gotten so deep there's no other way out that like, could I that 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 could be do you, have you ever listen to the audio yeah of, it's chilling yeah it's brutal yeah yeah um but do you uh, think david uh waco do you think uh david koresh believed it oh yes absolutely yeah yeah, David Koresh believed it. I don't like I, I don't like the guys that don't believe in their own shit. Elron? Do you no. think Elron? I don't think he believed it. He didn't believe it. Yeah. Uh, this Nexium guy, he didn't believe it. Yeah. Like, you know. Um, but uh oh, I also watched Tenet. Did you watch that? No. How is it? I well, liked it. Wait, I thought you said you watched or no, it was Sam. Sam said he watched it. He said it was just like watching an hour and a half or two hours of like a Call of Duty cutscene. Where you're just like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, the end, the third act is basically just a Call of Duty scene. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, but I, I don't know. I kind of, uh, you know, I don't like Christopher Nolan that much. Uh huh. Um, but I, I did enjoy this one. I, I don't know. I like the premise of it. Cool. So, did you yeah. like Dunkirk? I've never seen Dunkirk. I did like Dunkirk, yeah. so I guess I do like some Christopher Nolan. I just uh-huh. didn't like Inception or his space one, Interstellar. Um. Sam the Newsboy just gifted. I don't like your name, but I'll take your gifted. I appreciate you. <laughs> uh, hang on. A lot of more donations just came in. Whipboy79 donated 30 bucks. Says, I still owe you 20 for the no death run, and it's going to you right when I get paid. All right. Thank you, my man. Alexander Baldwin donated. Thanks, dude. 
Fat Black Ninja donated a hundred bucks. He says, "Well, shit, all the cool kids are doing it." Thanks, Fat Black Ninja. Oh. That's amazing. And Thick and Wing, my buddy Steven, donated fifty bucks. Says, "Congrats on the no death run." Thank you, Steven. I appreciate it, my man. And Bitchell donated five. What a name, Bitchell, like Mitchell, but with a B. All right. Um. <laughs> Yeah, should we read a, uh, a Miss March review, or what do you think? Is yeah, that... let's do it. All right. So you want to do it, or you want me to do it? Well, I can't show. I can't share a screen share. Okay. Um, I think I can. Let's try this out. Oh, this is going to be... Well, I, I can, but then you won't be able to see it, is the problem. So you'll have to read it, and I'll listen. All right, here we go. Oh, God, we, this we is should... so brutal. Just pulling it up. Rotten Tomatoes, 5%. Hey, so 5% liked it. <laughs> oh, no, think God. about this. So, there's 7 billion people in the world. So what's 5% of that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, this is a good way to do it. Good Lord. <clears throat> All right, here we go. I've come, I've come around. I actually like the movie again. All right. Um, well, the headline from the Time Out New York is a crude, <laughs> crass, virtually laugh-free sex comedy. Now, this is also our hometown paper. <laughs> this is. We, I gotta we find were, the full length of this one. Hang on. We were a New York uh, comedy troupe. Time Out New York actually gave us our start. I can prove it. <laughs> I actually have it framed. Hold on. Oh, my God. Oh, here it is. I found it. <clears throat> oh, God. This is brutal. I have it framed in my office. This was an article that was written. In Time Out, New York, um, nobody knew who we were at all before this article was uh, written. And then after that article, you couldn't get into our shows. Um, there was like lines around the block. We had to add a room um, at the top of the place that we played where we would just show it on television and people could go up there and watch a live feed. So it really, and that's when we started getting people coming by and inviting us to like the uh, comedy festivals, which is where we got the show. So Time Out, this is all just to say, Time Out New York should be the most friendly room that we could ever have. And, and let's see what they say. Here's about. what they say. A crude, crass, virtually laugh-free sex comedy written and directed by co-stars Zach Craig and Trevor Moore founder members of comedy sketch outfit the whitest kids you know four years after lapsing into a coma romantic virgin can't say, hey you can't say that Whoa. time out in new york you're canceled eugene wow. zach Kreger awakes to find that his once chased girlfriend cindy raquel alessi is now a playboy playmate pursued by his pal tucker's vengeful epileptic girlfriend they don't say your name dude epileptic girlfriend candace molly stanton and her fireman brothers, even crazier pals, the boys embark on a cross-country road trip to rescue Cindy from aged Lothario. <laughs> from aged Lothario. That's funny. Yeah, Hugh Hefner. And route they, enc- they encounter rap artist Horstick.mpeg, a-, a pair of lusty lesbians, and when they eventually gain entry to the Playboy Mansion, Hef himself and a bevy of big-breasted babes. All right? There's not that many. The one laugh comes when an angry mansion bouncer says, sorry, but it really sticks in my craw when people disrespect women. That's the end of the review. That's the only laugh? That's the only laugh. All right. According to him. See, I actually think that was pretty kind. That was our hometown paper. They went gentle on us. Oh. Yeah. We gotta, there's got to be a real brutal one. All right. Well, how about this? The Times UK. Here's the, the pull quote. Okay. We've never, we've never played in England. We've they never don't played get us. in England. They don't, yeah, we're over their heads. Yeah, yeah. The pull those, li- quote, those limeys have no idea what to do with us. The pull quote is, Miss March must be a contender for worst film of the year. It's so poor that you begin to suspect it's a pastiche. All right, let me, let me, let me see if I can find this full review. Times UK Miss March review. Someone says, "Why are you guys whipping yourselves?" I don't know because it's, it's kind of fun. I feel like I'm I'm finally at the at the place where I can. Okay, well, I couldn't find that one, but I found one from the Guardian that looks pretty ruthless. Let's try this. This Let's is gonna this is gonna hurt. A whiff of what I can only describe as pure evil billows off the screen <laughs> while this <laughs> comedy. Oh my god! Hang on, this is savage. 
a whiff of what I can only describe as pure evil billows off the screen while this comedy is playing. <laughs> a buddy gross out picture with zero laughs and a persistent chilling misogyny. Newcomers Zach Kreger and Trevor Moore write, direct, and star in this tale of a guy who falls into a coma just before he can get to have sex with his demure girlfriend on prom night and wakes up four years later to find she's a Playboy centerfold. He and his buddy travel to the Playboy mansion to get her back. This film is jam-packed with unfunny and objectionable moments, but the most breathtaking one shows our two heroes as kids, with one as an adorable playboy dude in embryo le- leching over little girls, complete with close-ups on the little girls themselves. To think that grown-ups actually made that scene, wrote it, filmed it, edited it, told each other it was okay, and when Hef starts droning on about women having an inner bunny, well, everyone involved is showing us their inner and outer Burke. What's Burke? I don't know. Some British shit. Wow. That guy straight up hated... I bet if that guy saw us on the street, he'd punch us in the face. That's... <laughs> Peter Bradshaw. Did I ever... Whew, that hurts. I mean, I feel really? fine. No, no. I just mean like that. Oh. Like that. That's... I love it. No, that actually I, didn't I, hurt my feelings at all. I love that that or that first sentence. It's a fantastic. whiff of what I can only pure describe evil. As pure <laughs> evil billows off the screen. I mean, can you get, can you write a worse review than that? I don't think you can. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, here's um, a good one. Hang on now. The Daily <laughs> Telegraph. Ooh, this is good. Ooh, this is all British. We're Hang not on, doing let, all let, let me find people. the real fully re- the full review here. Daily. You know, when Fox was going to release the movie, I asked. I said, "Don't." Send it to England. They won't. They won't get it. They're too fucking stupid to understand. <laughs> oh no! Where is it? Uh, I I don't think I'm gonna be able to find it because the thing is, Rotten Tomatoes doesn't link to the review. You can only get the the headlines here. Peter Bradshaw. Oh, I already read. It. Okay, here we go. Well, Tim Roby, a top critic, according to Rotten Tomatoes, he says an almost perfect atrocity. It is a towering K2 of bobbins. You British idiot. What the bobbins. fuck is bobbins? Of bobbins. The most mangy, noxious, charmless, sexist, racist, unfunny, infantile, stomach-churning, grotesque, clueless, inept, and stupid film of the year. Wow. Whoa! I, I object to some of this racist? Se- I, I mean, you know what? I don't think so, I- dude. I've, come, I've fully come around. I love this movie now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, this is just... People just... The knives are out. Uh, the Financial the, uh, Times? <coughs> yeah, here. Financial Times, a dire, gross-out comedy that tackles many of the same themes as Adventureland, but without an ounce of subtlety or wit. That's, that's fair. I mean, subtlety. There wasn't a sure. subtle movie. Here's a, here's a here's a positive according to the the icon. Uh, Chris Bumbray from Joe Bio's Movie Network never heard Joe Blows Joe Blows Movie Network which I've never heard of says definitely worth seeing if you like a good gross out film slash sex comedy. Hey buddy, oh, there we go. The um, did I ever tell you there's one time I was eating at um, it was after the movie came out and I was eating at a uh, Kellogg's Diner uh, in Williamsburg. Uh huh. Um, and, uh, I was just eating by myself at a booth and this girl like comes and sits down across from me in my booth and she goes, well, this is awkward. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, what's going on? (laughs) Like, you know, what the fuck are you doing? (laughs) Like, and she was like, this is awkward. And I was like, uh, why? And she was like, because I just wrote a review about Miss March for my college paper. And I was like. All right. Did you like it? Like uh, she was like, "No, I didn't." I was like, "All right." <laughs> no, I didn't. It's, like, it's this is not this is awkward, but it's only awkward because like how, how was did you think that I recognized you? Yeah. As like, oh, that's the girl that wrote a review about this in her college paper, like, you know, kind of like, it was the most she was out of her mind. Oh my god. And even if you had recognized her, it's like the assumption would be like, oh, there she is. Well, obviously neither of us is leaving this room until we've had a confrontation. I hope she just gets it over with. Yeah, here good. All right. Let's pull this band-aid off. It's like that is crazy, dude. I just love the arrogance of it. Like, you know, that you you write a thing 
a review, a movie review. No one reads the movie reviews in a college paper. If you go to the if you go to the college, you, you don't, don't read, read the, the college paper. No. And if you read the college paper, you don't read the movie review. The only person like, reading know. that review is her, the editor, and maybe her dad when she emails it to him, and he doesn't yeah. even read the whole thing. He's like, "Good, I'm glad you're writing. Good, good, okay." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, but she sent that out, and then like, so she sees me at a thing, and she's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> like another another location, another day. Yeah, no, but she sees me. Yeah, she sees me at the thing, and she's like, like she, she's like, oh, well, this is at Kellogg's. Okay, okay. Yeah, she's like, oh fuck. Well, he knows this. I gotta just talk about it, you know, because you know it's just gonna be too awkward for everyone eating in here, you know, to have the two of us in this room. Unreal, man. Yeah. Oh boy, I think about her a lot, though. Yeah, I get it. Because that's such an insane thing. Well, she's operating under the same logic that I was operating on in ninth grade when I went up to those people on the train. And I was like, you guys are talking about Mark Wu. My friend met him. You know, where it's like you think that the world is somehow so small that everything needs to be acknowledged. And it's yeah. just like ludicrous. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mitch, Mitch Mitcherson says, did you bang afterwards? That would have been an incredible end to that story. But, yeah. No. <laughs> um, yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, here's another one. Let's let's do another one. Yep. Well, this guy kind of gets it. Gone with the twins. Uh, Mike Massey writes: the style of comedy will easily appeal to some and completely disgust others. Sure. I'd, I'd say that's that's very generous. Yeah, it'll appeal to about five percent, and it'll disgust about ninety five percent. Yeah. Oh man. Mm. All right, Someone I'm said, done. I can't take any more. Oh, I loved it. I thought it was a great. It's a great bit. We should do this every now and yeah, then. Yeah, we can do more later. Someone said, um, where was it? Uh, basically, they were asking, when did you realize that people weren't going to like the movie? Oh, I feel like I realized it when we looked at the editor's assembly. So, like, you shoot a movie and then... The editor has some time to kind of get it together and they do their rough cut and then they sit down with you and show it to you. And I remember the first time we sat down and watched the editor's assembly, it was, in my opinion, so bad. And I was like, this, we're, we're fucked. I was like, right. we've, we've made a bad, a really bad movie. And I remember you and I went across the street and we were like getting chicken at, at, for lunch or something at that place. And, and I was like, I, I think I was just like, I was in shock. I was just like, I wanted to throw up. I was like, because this was a big deal for us. You know, we like yeah. came out to L.A. We like Fox, you know, we like had a multi-million dollar budget. And like, and it was just like, we blew it. And, and I remember you were like, well, first, first of all, I think we need a new editor. <laughs> I was like, I hope Tim never sees this. <laughs> but I was just like, oh, dude, snap. We're fucked. We're fucked. I think we just had the worst conversation on the sidewalk. But I remember. Chain I remember smoking, just we're, like, we're fucked, Trevor. It's not, we're fucked. Okay. <laughs> it was like that. <laughs> I remember we were traveling and uh, around the country and showing it, oh, and uh, kill me. and then you and then you do Q and A afterwards. And I remember we showed it at some college like that, and some girl stood up and she was like, um, "Did so? Did that movie end up the way you wanted it to?" <laughs> <laughs> Which is such a what a good I, question, dude. I remember laughing. I was like, <laughs> uh, like "And what did what did we say?" I think we were like, "Not really." You know. <laughs> What, what, what you want to do is go out there in front of these people after they've just watched the movie and be like, it, I, it's, I know, I know, I hate it too, I'm sorry. But you can't. Like, you can't do that. So you just have to go out there and be like, hey, all right, questions? Any, any questions? <laughs> yeah, you got to promote it. Oh, it's the worst. That was the worst. I think, honestly, that was like one of the worst experiences of my life. And remember, I've been set on fire. What, That's right. And, and, I, and I truly mean it. And, and this is... This is this is not bullshit. If I had to choose between being set on fire again or like, what? Ma listen to me, or making a movie, like having that opportunity and having it go the way that went, where like the, the final product is that, I would go towards me, dude. I'll get over it. I'll be okay. Yeah. Wow. I never hated the movie. I never hated <laughs> it. Like, you know, I, 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 I think it's uneven and I think there's parts of it that don't work at all. Um, you know, but I do think there's parts that work. I, I think like when it came out and the reviews were so unanimous uh, hating it, I, I think I was worried for a little bit like, oh, shit, am I going to like be able to work? Right. You know, like, you know, but then as soon as I like 
could, you know, I was like, oh, okay, I'm fine. You know, kind yeah. of thing. Like that, that was the worry period is just like until you're right. you booked you're the next right. thing. I, and I do think it, it did, I think we, our career would have gone a different way if we hadn't done it. We did have like a lot of interest from Hollywood at that time. That was just the first, like, this is a go movie. Take it. You know, yep. like, I feel like if we'd said no to that, we would have written a different, better movie. Because that movie well, was written for us, and we, we rewrote the script. But The movie that we were writing at that time was insane. What movie so were we writing? Like, we were writing The End of the World. Oh. And so, you know, I feel like it would have also been very divisive, but I think, uh, I mean, but I think that would have been like a cult classic. Yeah. Kind of thing. The End of the World. Yeah. Kind of end of the World would be, I think it would have been cool. Yeah. Oh God! Which got stolen, by the way. Someone says they fucking stole they it. They fucking stole it. Those, Those motherfuckers, motherfuckers stole it. They fucking <laughs> stole it. Oh, that man. guy. Somebody says read Fight Barn, please. We really should. We should read Fight Barn. Fire well, story. I've told the fire story. I think on Newsboys. I don't think you have. Really? I don't think you've told the fire story on Newsboys. I think you might have told it on your oh. like uh, on your uh, um, soul thing. Oh. Well, let's do a collective souls. All right. Well, I'll tell it. I'll I'll tell yep. it in time. In time. <laughs> or or now. I, I'll, oh oh oh. I don't know. I whatever don't know. you want. Um, what else? Hap- what else? Uh, what else happened in the news? <laughs> chat. This is chat's part. Chat. We need you. Tell us what happened. Somebody says Jesus, pull out before you come. What the fuck is that? What are you talking about? They um, want the fire story. You should tell a fire story. Okay. All right. I'll, yeah. Okay. Um. So was, I wish I could find, wait, are you friends with my old Facebook profile? Are you on Facebook? Let me see. Because I, I'm locked out of that Facebook profile, but the photos of it are on my old profile. Uh, anyway, um, so it was, Chris, it was Christmas 2008, right? It was actually right before Miss March came out. It was like we'd finished making the movie. And we were going to go tour and everything in, in, in the new year. But uh, for Christmas, me and my girlfriend at the time and her sister and her sister's boyfriend, uh, we all went on vacation to Tobago, which is this uh, island off the coast of Trinidad, which is an island off the coast of Venezuela. So it's like down there in the you know south. Um, and we rented this house and it was really cool. And on Christmas Day, everything is shut down. I think we'd gotten there like one day before. So we were going to be there for like 10 days. So Christmas Day, everything's closed. We're like cruising around. No stores are open to sell us food or drink. It's like they take Christmas real serious down there. Uh, But we found this one gas station that was open. And we went in and behind the counter they sell uh, punch-in rum, which is like basically Everclear. It's like 150 proof. It's like really powerful. And it was all they had. And I bought a bottle of it. And I remember asking the guys I bought it. I was like, is this good? And he was like, no. I was like, okay. All right. Thank you. Um, but it's, you know, we wanted to get drunk. That's all we could do. So we bought the bottle of punching. And then we saw this dude selling uh, fish on the side of the road. So we bought a fish. And we had this, like, grill at the house. So, you know, we, we thought we were good to go. So we get back to the house. Um, Mark is outside uh, working with the grill. I'm sautéing the fish in the kitchen, and I look out on the porch, and he, like, can't get the grill to light. So I grab the bottle of rum. I pour some into the cap, pour the cap onto the coals, throw a match, fireball, it's okay. Um, it's set. So, But we learned, like, this is, like, very flammable, flammable. booze. Yeah. So I'm back in the kitchen, and I, I'm sautéing the fish. I look out, and he has got the bottle, and he's going, like, whoosh, like making, throwing it, splashing it directly onto the flames, making fireballs. Just like, whoosh. And I go, stop, stop, stop. And I go running through the living room towards the porch. I'm like, stop. And as I'm running, he's kind of like walking in a circle around the grill doing this. And as as I approach, he kind of reaches where he's aiming it towards me. And he goes like this. And the fire sucked up into the bottle. And it shot out like a flamethrower. And it, and it hit me from like seven feet away. Uh, but it hit me in the chest. And I went up in flames so from my knees to the top of my head i was like engulfed and i went running back through the living room into the kitchen screaming my girlfriend of seven years at the time only knew it was me because of my height 
That's the like that's how on fucking fire I was. I was like an wow. Indiana Jones extra or some shit. So I like I threw myself on the ground, stopped drop and roll, right? But it's a tile floor, so that like really doesn't uh. fucking help. So I'm just like burning. Her sister grabbed one of those like big water jugs that was on top of the fridge, just turned it upside down and like put me out. And I like real like when I when the flames went out, I was steaming. And the skin of my hands was coming down in ribbons. My uh, shirt had burned off. My my track pants had burned like into my legs. So they were like uh, plastic had melted into me. I was my face was like bubbling. I my I was fucked. I was just fucked. And I thought I was gonna die. I was like, I, I, I don't know. Is this how I die? And like all of a sudden, the door. I'm screaming. Everyone's standing over me like like idiots. Like we don't know what to do. And the door kicks open and this big, like, black as night, bald man comes, like, who I'd never seen, came rushing into the kitchen, scooped me up under his arms, and just, like, we went, like, running out. And he, well, he carried me out like a baby, threw me in the back seat of his car, got in the front, and just, like, we took off. He was a Canadian tourist who was staying at the house next door to us, heard me screaming, and just, like, ran over and was just like, I'm going to help this dude. He just, like, took wow. control. Oh, this guy's, like, my hero forever. Do you still keep an, uh, up with him? No. But... We, <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't know where the... We didn't know where the hospital was, dude. We right. didn't know where the hospital was, so we're just driving around, and we'd come up to people on the side of the road, and he would, like, slow down, and I'm in the back screaming like a fucking stuck pig, and he'd be like, uh, where's the hospital? And more than one time, they would not answer him. They would look in the back and be like, what happened to him? And he's like, no, dude, where's the hospital? And they're like, what's wrong with him? He's like, get the fucking hospital. And it's like, he's got a tummy ache. It was crazy. <laughs> Finally, we get to the hospital. He carries me inside. Dude, I'm telling you, there were fucking chickens inside the hospital running around. It was the craziest shit in the world, man. They took me in the back. I, like, I'd kind of stopped screaming at that point. And I, we were like in the waiting room and they were like, wait over there. And I remember my girlfriend was like, scream, scream. And I was like, ah! And so they like, I just made such a noise. They like pulled me in the back. And then it was like one of those things like, have you ever, I guess you haven't, but like when you're so severely injured, like they pulled off all my clothes in front of all these people. I was like totally naked in front of like, like Caitlin and her sister and the guy and all the doctors. And it like didn't, I didn't even care. There was like not even right. an answer. It was like, I don't give a fuck. Like I'm dying here. Yeah. Um, and then they just like hit me with morphine and then didn't do anything. And I was like, oh, more morphine. And then they hit me with morphine again. And then I like woke up hours later in, in a bed. Like, upstairs. were you like panicked when you woke up? No, I was so, I had so much morphine in me that I was like in a great mood. I was just like, oh man, I got set on fire. It was like, it was like, that's it was, crazy. It was crazy. And then the, the a weird thing happened. This is a long story. I'm sorry. But, they brought Caitlin and her sister in to like come say hi to me up in this like room. By the way, I was in, they only have one room for the intensive care. So I'm in there with like all these other seriously injured, crazy people. Um, and when Megan, her sister, saw all of my blabs and like my, because my skin was just bubbling in like huge softball sized pus yeah. things, she fainted. And we, wow. Yeah. And we thought it was because I looked so grotesque. But when she fucking came to she's like no it wasn't it was when i looked at your gore she's like i remembered something i'd forgotten i think i talked about this before she's like i remembered something i had completely blocked out of my memory like when i was a little girl i was walking they grew up in dc she's like i was walking down the street and a man jumped off of a building and committed suicide landed right in front of me and i saw wow. it and i'd forgotten that i'd ever seen that until i looked at you and then that memory just like unlocked and i that's why i fainted is that wow. fucking weird that's crazy anyway do you think um, she was just being nice and it was just she didn't want to tell you that you look <laughs> that gross that would be the weirdest way to be nice it was so awkward i i, I good thinking <laughs> on that whole suicide story so what when you're screaming are you just screaming unintelligible or are you like i was screaming unintelligible a lot and then i remember Caitlin was in the in the back seat with me as we were going to the hospital i remember being like Am I gonna die? Am I gonna die? And she was like, she was like, no, no, you're not gonna die. But my face was so burned. I was like, am I gonna be like disfigured? Will I ever work like again? I, I did ask that, and yeah. and I remember that she was like, I don't think so. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> and so you'd rather do that than make Miss March too. <laughs> oh my god.
Yeah. Someone says, what happened to the guy that set you on fire? What was he? What was his? Oh, like? well, before I went out from the morphine, I, this, I'm actually proud of myself for this. I, I was like, get Mark in here. He was in the lobby. I was like, get Mark back here. So Mark came back and I was like, I was like, dude, it's okay. Like, don't, don't beat yourself up for this. Like, this was a stupid mistake that had crazy consequences. And it, we're cool. I love Mark. He's awesome. Like, I'm. It's very nice. Yeah. It was. It, he was gonna fucking. He was like crying. He was so upset. I felt. Bad. I think I would have let him sit with it for a while. Well, yeah. <laughs> so he says, "Do you have scars?" So I have third degree on my stomach. So I have scars here. It kind of looks like oatmeal. Um, and everywhere else is second degree. So second degree, if you take care of it, can heal. Um, totally fine. So I, I'm, I'm good. But uh, if you saw my hands, I look like Freddy Krueger. Like it was, it was crazy. You wouldn't believe it. That's insane. Yeah. All right. Done. Nashville bombing. People are so talking what's about the, the Nashville. Do we know who did it and why? Yeah, some dude. Um, who uh, is he? A right wing uh, terrorist? I don't know. No, I think he was a guy who um, my. I think he was mad at 5G. What the fuck is with people in 5G? What is the deal? So he like blew up the, um, so he blew up the, uh, I mean, yeah, he's a terrorist, but I don't know if he was right wing or, I don't know was what he Was he trying to hurt people or was he trying to bring down 5G? Yeah, he was trying to bring down, he wasn't trying to hurt anybody because they had a, he had a loudspeaker that was like, everybody get out of here, this is a bomb. Oh, really? And yeah, so, so he drove his RV up uh, downtown Nashville and uh, he he was an IT guy, so he like knew a lot of. Uh, and he parked it outside. So he should have known better. Well, he parked. <laughs> he should have known better. <laughs> that that five G is not mind control. Oh, I thought you meant like the whole thing was an accident. You know, I, like, yeah. What, oh. a, what a fucking idiot! <laughs> he blew his car up. No, so he put his RV outside of the AT and T building, and they're still fucked. The whole infrastructure is fucked. It, like you know, AT and T went down because he like blew it up. Wow. Um, so I guess and, he did know. All right. He yeah, he knew what he was doing. Um, and uh, but then he had a recording that was playing. Someone says he was a right wing Trump supporter. Mm -hmm. um, Listen to the so, audio of the van speakers. Fucking eerie. I would love to. Let's see if I can find that. Because it, it was, and and then he played. He had downtown where all the people go downtown. He had that playing, oh and then it God. blew up. It's crazy. Why would he and play he that song? That's because he was downtown. Okay. He took it downtown, and he and he looks like uh, an older version of me. He looks like uh, like oh, no. if, if if I was in the movie Looper, he looks like my Looper came <laughs> back. <laughs> what if he is? I know. So, what is the theory? Do you know the conspiracy theory about five G? Like, what do they think it is? What do they think it's doing? I don't know. I think there's a lot of different theories about it. Um, you know, like it's just it's. Uh, you know, it, like, like it, it's just bad. Like it'll cause cancer or something. I don't know. I got a fr I got a friend who's uh, who believes it. Um, really? And, yeah. And um, he was telling me. Oh, he let me moved. just pull this guy's face in here just so Chad can yep. see it. Hang on, this is pretty crazy stuff. Look at that guy. Yeah, he kind of looks like you. I see it. Yeah, it's like Looper me from the future. <laughs> All right, let's go back. Um, I always but, should uh, my email. Yeah, my, my friend believes it. And um, so what does he like, think? Well, he's like, they put a 5G tower next to my condo. Is this someone that and, I know? You don't have to t say who it is. Um, you might have met them. Is it in L.A.? Yeah. OK. It's a it's a friend of mine. Um, you know, I, I think you might have met him once or twice. Um, but he was like, they put a 5G tower next to his condo. And and he was like, I swear. Like within a month, all the palm trees around it were dead. Really? Yeah. So he moved. Like he sold his condo and, and moved to a new one because he was like, fuck, whatever that is. But Apparently. how could that be? I mean, wouldn't somebody realize like this is incredibly dangerous and like take, take, I, I, I don't know. I feel like there's safeguards yeah, I don't know. for this. Kind of, what do I know? I'm an idiot. Um, crazy, man. Hey, let me do a quick batch of thank yous. Sam the Newsboy, I thank you. John Brown's Body, thanks for the gifted. Uh, I Stuff Invisible Dogs, thank you. Personal Pussy, thanks so much. Uh -huh. Joey Sandwiches, Lemsford, Paul Bellini, 
John Brown's body. Okay, cool. I feel like I'm getting back into the thing here, but I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. And then we got some donations. Just Morals says, wow, Zach. Irma Gerd donated, says, on cults believing their own shit, one of the big flat earthers admitted he was never proven wrong. He'd never admit it because uh, he's in too deep. It's his job, personality, and identity now. You can you can start which a believer guy? and get trapped. I don't know which guy. Irma I, God, I, know, I know one of the big uh, flat earther guys. How? Uh, he came on my Comedy Central show. So did you? I, mean, I, don't, I don't know him well. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah, just, you met I, him. I've talked to him. Yeah. Crazy. Did he Mark seem like Sargent, a normal yeah. guy? Yeah, Mark Sargent is uh, the uh, the guy. It was um, it's funny because like so I I was actually wearing this shirt, uh-huh. um, not on purpose, but I just I happened to be wearing it at the tech rehearsal, mm-hmm. and so it, we were talking to him live via satellite, and he thought it was uh, like a dig at him. Oh, he thought you were being antagonistic. Oh shit. Yeah, and and then he was like, "I see the shirt," and I was like, "Oh no, dude! I just honestly, this is what I had that was clean. Like, it's not." Do you uh, think he believed you? I don't know. I mean, he seemed nice enough. Uh huh. You know. Huh. So um, what is what do these people think? Like, if you are, and I think we've talked about this before, but like, if you think the Earth is flat, what do you think NASA is? A giant theater? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I. I, I don't. To, honestly, that one's never really interested me that much because it's just like, so stupid. It's kind of a little too banana pants for me, yeah. like, you know, that I just kind of, I'm like, what? Okay. I have a cursory understanding of it, but like, you know, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the motive is. That's the thing that I can't understand is like, what's the motive? Like I get the conspiracy theories where there's like money behind it, right? you know, but this, I don't get it. Like, yeah. you know, this seems like just you're spending money, you know, so. Hey, have you seen that there's a movie on, I think it's on Netflix or something called, um, Phenomenon, there's like a new about aliens. There's a new documentary about aliens that looks really good. And they have like a lot of people in the government talking about it. Do you know what I'm fucking talking about? Chad, no. you know, it's big. It's like a, it's a, it's a big famous new documentary that just came out. Fuck, this is driving so, me nuts. Somebody said um, that, uh, that uh, UFO disclosure is connected to the COVID bill that it's in there. Is that true? I've never heard that. I think it's called the phenomenon. I think that's what it is. The phenomenon. Wait, yeah, UFO disclosure. Yes, it is. I think some some Republican senator put it in there. I'm glad he awesome. did. I was like, good, fucking do it. Sick. Marco Rubio? That's- no, not Marco Rubio. He didn't do it. it Mark E. R. Um. Uh. The the, the uh um. Also, uh, someone in the chat said that they're finally going to disclose the JFK stuff. When? Like. Uh, I don't know. I just saw in the chat, but they've been they've been talking, they've been flirting with doing it for years, and then they always like reclassify it. But um, that'd be rad if they declassify it completely. Yeah. Okay, did you hear about the new COVID variant? Comfy Dog just brought yes. this up. That's pretty scary. So I understand it has it's seventy five percent more transmissible, but it's not more lethal. Right, and the and the vaccine that they still think works on. And it, the vaccine so. will work on it. Yeah, yeah. It just means that everyone is gonna like you. You can't leave the house anymore. It's crazy because it's like Ivan, our friend in New York, he got it in June or before that, or like May. April. Like he got it like right when it was coming out, when it was new. He got it. And he's he's forty years old. He's mm-hmm. you know relatively young guy. He got COVID. He says he still can't taste his food. That to me is like that's enough of a reason right there to take this shit so fucking seriously. Yeah, what if you that, lose your sense of taste for the rest of your life, dude. That would fucking suck. Yeah, like it's it's um you know I know that there's like a ninety eight or ninety nine percent survival rate to it. I just don't want all the weird side effects because we don't even know all of them. Yeah, like you know, like they're saying like you know uh, I and also I just don't want to fucking I don't I don't I don't want a bat virus in me. That's that's just gross to me. Yeah, you know the the, the idea because I I you know I don't like germs, but like the idea of like that I got a bat disease. <laughs> I don't like that at all. <laughs> Oh my god! Do you think if you lost your sense of taste, you would be able to just eat crazy healthy, or does it not even work that way? I don't see why not. But I mean, like, I like eating cake because I like the taste, but I also like the blood sugar rush. I think I'm addicted to the feeling after I eat it. Well, you could probably do both. You could probably eat your cake, and then you could also like eat like a carrot. Right. Yeah, the texture is kind of I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I would eat a lot healthier. Why the fuck not? 
Yeah. And then losing, supposedly losing your sense of smell is the worst. Well, if you lose your sense of smell, then that's like 80% of your sense of taste comes from smell, right? It's also uh, so much of your um, memories are triggered by smell. Ah, brutal. So it fucks with your memories. Brutal. Yeah. It's bad news. It's bad news, everybody, but we're almost through it. This is the year, 2021. We're going to do it. Um, Somebody says, pretty sure dying is the worst. Thank you, Bodacious. Thank you. Thank you. Although Bodacious, I know, is dealing with this. Bodacious has family members with COVID. I hope they're doing it. He does? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I, I mean, I would imagine, like, you could do a poll. How many people in this, you know, have family members who have at least had it? It would that'd be, in, from, that'd be interesting Let's do that see. poll. I, if, yeah. yeah if, and, and let's say family members, let's extend that to extended family that means grandfather grandparents cousins aunts and uncles so someone yeah. in that that degree of your family if they've had covid I, i'm i'm very curious i'll bet it'll be most yeah yeah it's uh, brutal and the worst thing about it like my wife was talking about this she was like is is that you know if you get it you know nobody can go see you so it's like all these old people that get it and they're dying like they have to die alone like nobody can be with them to like hold their hand it's and so like you sad. can't go to funerals. It's it's so the, it's, it's that's that's the and I the, know the, I know the, that there are people in this chat who have lost like I know I'm not going to name names. I know people in this chat have lost family members. too. So I hope you, we're not being insensitive, but it's like it's a crazy thing yeah. that we have to talk about it. It's fucking. I don't wild. think we're I don't. I, yeah, I, I, I don't want to not intending on, no. on being insensitive, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the, my family has it. Um, my on the my in-laws have it mm -hmm. like on that yeah side. me too my in-laws have yeah. it but my yeah. my blood family doesn't that i know of yeah um brutal just hang in there we're almost there it's the end is in sight so it looks get like vaccines. 61 percent say yes 60 percent. that's that's crazy i actually thought it was going to be higher yeah um the uh yeah, like, I don't know when, you know, because, like, right now they're giving it to nurses. Sam's mom got the vaccine. My my brother got the vaccine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, <clears throat> so it's like, uh, they're right now they're giving it out to nurses and, and old people. And I don't think it's right to try to, to you know, figure out how to get it while they're giving it to them. But as soon <laughs> but... as it goes, but <laughs> as soon as it goes to, like, regular people... I'm going to fucking elbow people into the wall. I'm going to figure out how to like get yeah. this thing, you know, like, yeah. My buddy, Josh, the director of the Sasquatch doc, um, his father-in-law is the vaccine czar at either USC or UCLA, whichever one of those schools has like the big virology program. One of them does. I don't know which one, but he's, he's like the head of the department. And he was telling Josh, he was like, all of the vaccines that are becoming available, like, in the states like all of them mm -hmm. he's like i've looked at all of them he's like they're all great he's like i will be i will get them as soon as i can they're totally good he's like that's great yeah it's just crazy like tucker carlson is going on tv like trying to spread suspicion about getting vaccinated against this thing it's like do, do you have any agenda other than just like sowing evil and chaos like why would you why would you do that what what is the what justification is there to try and like cast doubt well, on the vaccine it's fucking uh, mental. well i think it's just it people there's a there's an audience that wants to hear that yeah but I, sure but is your responsibility to like the the truth and and you know the health of the nation or to just like rally these fucking people yeah all those talking head guys they don't give a fuck about oh, this truth disgusting, like they dude. they're just they're they're entertainers it's absolutely they're just disgusting. there to like you know yeah to to sell uh gold really <laughs> have you ever there, down to there's some greek quote and i can't remember it's from a play but somebody says there go the people i must follow them for i am their leader i feel like that's tucker carlson oh that's cool i like that right someone says none of you can handle the truth fuckers well that Maybe. person is not jesus um yeah i i uh no i'm excited i, I want to get the vaccine oh me too I, I, i'm totally I'm totally in it. I don't care. Like, you know, like what, what, you know, what, what, they, I don't understand what they think is in it. 
I don't know, and I'm going to get this all wrong, but I know that there's there's a couple different vaccines that are coming out right now, and so, so you know traditionally a vaccine is they inject you with a small amount of the dead virus, so your body can like see it and like analyze it and basically spread the word. Like if you see this guy, try and get in here, kick his ass, you know, fight it. Right. But I guess there's this new like nanotechnology that's come out where they it, they don't even give you the virus, they just give you the blueprint. So it's they mRNA. Even, yes, yes. So mRNA. how does that work? Do you know? So it's it's this new uh, it's basically like what's exciting about mRNA is that it's going to be a game changer for cancer because you Why? can ba- you can basically program this shit to go after anything. I love it. I love it. So like and and this has been something that has been in the pipeline for years but now it's like, you know, this is the first time we're actually like really using it. Um and I think that's what uh, cause I, th- I think my parents are like iffy on this thing. Like, like they're they like, might worried. Not get the vaccine? they might not get it, uh-huh. you know, like, um, but, uh, and I think it's because like, you know, there's all this information about like, well, it's like once all of a sudden it's like, it starts changing your MRNA. People associate a, that with DNA. So oh, people are like, yeah. Oh, it's going to change my DNA, but it doesn't do that supposedly. I don't know. But, um, I don't know. My DNA is not that great anyway. <laughs> Um, well, I'm excited. I am. I am. Um, Anyone miss polio? My grandfather had polio. He was in a wheelchair his whole life. Um, I feel like he was my, one of the last people to get it. I had a neighbor who had polio, really? and uh, he had it as a kid. And mm-hmm. he was like an old guy by the time that I knew him. And um, he, uh, he had a limp um, because of the polio. So he would limp. And uh, and my dog would keep biting him because it hated his fucking limp. That's all I know about <laughs> oh polio. God, it's like, dude. so this guy, like, he lives through polio to like age, and every dog hates him. <laughs> <laughs> so every, it's like a rough life. Oh my god. Tazu for you says, "How soon after you get the vaccine will you jerk it? What does one have to do with the other? What are you talking about, dude?" Are you not supposed to jerk it when, when you get yeah, the... Yeah, is that uh, a thing? What if they gave you the vaccine like, now no masturbating for a year? You'd be like, wait, you, you got to tell me that before you do this, man. <laughs> what will happen? <laughs> yeah. Oh, your dick will become like a bat's dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, hang Fucking on. Fucking bats. Oh, fuck bats. Motherfuckers. Do we need them? So killing... A Klingonosaurus or whatever says... TLDR, old vaccines used to we- used weakened viruses to let your immune system identify it and make antibodies that bind, that bind to it. mRNA vaccine makes a piece from the outside of the virus without the virus itself, so your, bo- your body still makes the antibody that binds to it. Okay, all right. Good to know. Somebody said bats aren't to blame for being tested on in a lab. I agree. Like, I, well, so I was watching. Nah, I, bet, I bet we made this shit. Well, so I watched this this YouTube series by this this virologist named Chris Martinson a lot. He has this great YouTube channel called um, Peak Prosperity, and and he is like he knows a fuck ton about viruses, and he like anyway. Uh, and the conc- he's not political at all. And the conclusion that he came to after analyzing it was that it was it's got to be lab made. And he was like he like laid out all these points as to why I, whatever. Anyway, now I sound like kind of a kook, but. He convinced me. No, Some I, YouTube that, that, channel convinced me of something. I'm 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 old. It happened. I heard it was someone sucked a Dracula's dick. A <laughs> Dracula's dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's like so close to our sketch where it's like Timmy comes confetti. He's like, I did get a hand jam from a magician. Yeah. That also sounds like a thing that could go around. Like, yeah, I heard where did Dracula live? Tanzania or something? What was it? Transylvania. Transylvania. Like, you know, like, isn't that a real place, Transylvania? Yeah. Like, some, like, in, like, you know. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, it's like, I could see that going around. They're like, yeah, over in Transylvania, someone sucked the Dracula's dick, and that's how, <laughs> how this COVID thing happened. Oh, my God. Um, Somebody says, you're the- talking about the Epstein kill switch theory. I don't know what that is. Oh yeah, remember we talked about this. I on forget here. it. What is it? It was that Epstein because he 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 donated. Oh to all yeah, these that was a good one. So he's like, when if I die, release this uh, Dracula virus. Yeah, and uh, you know that guy, that guy sucked. Yeah. Um, mind fuzz. All right, buddy. Later. I I love boards of Canada. Later, dude. Um, 
Epstein. You think Epstein's still alive? No, no. Hmm. You do? I know you don't, but you like that. Yeah. You like the idea that he might not. Well, where, where would he be, be if he's still alive? What, what's the story? He's probably uh, at some fucking island. So he got bailed out, like he got yeah. busted out of the clink. Well, they were like, you know, the, the, the they were like, he has too much dirt on everybody. Like he's got all these kill switches. We'll fake his suicide, and then he'll live up on like you know whatever the hell he does. You know. Did they um, show his body? They probably didn't. They, I guess they don't. Yeah, do they that. showed his body. They did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have been thinking lately about you brought up like how Osama they they killed him and then just like got rid of his body instantly. That is that is pretty crazy. Yeah, we don't want to see that. What's what's the what's the rationale? Like, why would they do that? I don't because because the they, whole world he died. is looking for this guy. Yeah, because he died in two thousand two in Tora Bora. But then, like, they still wanted to go to war, so they had to pretend he was still alive. In Tora and Bora. Then, like, Wait, why is that? Just are you just picking a country out of your ass, or is that no? It's in two thousand two, we were they were bombing the shit out of Tora Bora. Like, um, where the you know, fuck is he, Tora Bora? I'm thinking Bora Bora. What's Tora Bora? Tora Bora is like a. It's like a, in Afghanistan. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and um, and so uh, it, yeah, and so they were bombing that, and and, and also he's got a dial. He's on dialysis. <laughs> Okay, Seinfeld. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> ah! Ah! Um, it is crazy. But, Let's say it went down the way they said, where they just like capped him, and then they dumped his body in the ocean. Without, yeah. without, so they dumped his body in the ocean without cremating it? They just like dropped him in the ocean? So that yeah. means somewhere on the ocean floor is Osama bin Laden's skull. Mm-hmm. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, with a big hole in it. With a big hole in it? Could you imagine if, if you could fucking find that? Bronze that bad boy, put that on your mantle? That would be the coolest thing in the world. That would be the coolest, like, conversation piece in the world. What's yeah. that? Oh, well, my dad is an avid scuba diver, and he was able to figure out about where they, <laughs> where they did it. And, he, you know, he spent four years, you know, diving under that. F- finally found this fucking skull, lacquered it, gave it to me. Pretty cool, huh? Well, it's that like, is it's pretty like cool. How, how they had Napoleon's dick. What? You know? Yeah. They cut his dick off when he died. And it's like this. Why? Because they're like, this is funny. And then (laughs) so then basically like it was something where, you know, there's a person like a super rich person has it. And it's had all these different owners. It goes on auction every now and then. And people must look. It must be like this big now. Just like a tiny little gray worm. No, I heard it was a hog. Hell yeah, dude. No. (laughs) 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 It's like this. It's huge. Um, what would be the most badass tattoo to get on your dick? The alphabet. The whole alphabet? Yeah, that'd be badass. Why? Just be like... <laughs> <laughs> Probably Garfield. I could f- Garfield? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You have something, there's something that connects your brain to penises and Garfield. Well, it's because I was doing all those paintings. <laughs> paintings? You remember that? No. I boinked I was doing... No, I was doing a series of paintings called Big Dick Garfield. Of actual I, paintings, like oil and canvas? Yeah, I got into painting and I would paint Garfield with like a giant fucking dick. <laughs> and I made tons of these things. And, when? Uh, this was like five or six years ago. I didn't know about this. Oh, I have some. I'll, I'll show them too. Um, Trevor, but, uh, if you, I bet if you sold those, we, that we could raise some serious money for the movie. <laughs> my, my Big Dick Garfield yeah. series? Are you kidding? <laughs> Chat, am I right about this? I feel like people would want those paintings. Yeah, there's a a uh, one of the writers um, on my show. Um, she like found her kids, uh, his Instagram account, uh-huh. and um, and his name was Garfield Cum. <laughs> oh boy, that's incredible! Like, do you get mad when you see that? Or are you like, you're not supposed to know, and you see it's Garfield Cum? You're like, oh, whoa. <laughs> like, how do you react? Well, she was telling us in the writer's room, like, she was like, I found, and, and, and it was all pictures of, like, Garfield in a robe. Like, you know, it was just, like, funny meme pictures of Garfield. But, like, she was, she was like, she was like, I don't know if I should be upset. We're like, that's hilarious. Yeah. That's like, the, be proud. Yeah, don't be mad. Don't be mad at him for that. That's funny. Um, and, uh, but then I was like, oh, I should give her one of my big dick Garfield paintings that she can give like her kit, like, you know, like that. So, and then my wife was like, 
so you're going to give one of these paintings to someone that works for you? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, you're so dumb. Don't do that. <laughs> Wait, what's her, what's her rationale? Because <laughs> it could be work. It could be seen as bad, like in a workplace. Like, oh, here's a big picture I painted of like Garfield. Like with it would a big be like dick. bad because it's favoritism or bad because no, you're no, like it could be like it could be obscene. Like you know, oh. yeah. But I, I never thought about it. Um, I, I'm a lot of people want these boingas, dude. I'm telling you. I'll find uh, there, uh, people saying we buy it for a, a thousand. Somebody said they buy it for fifteen hundred. I'll find it. I'll, could raise I some, was, this could be your no death run, Trevor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, honestly, honestly, like it was, I was, I got into, I was painting Garfield and then I was painting as I was trying to do as photorealistic pictures as I could of Bin Laden. So I was painting a lot of pictures of Bin Laden. Pull which is some weird of these paintings we were, out. I want to see one. We just talk about, well, I don't know where they are. I'll, I can get them by the next show because they're somewhere in like one of the closets, like in storage. Camp, okay. So. All right. Yeah. So wait, you're trying to paint as realistic of a Bin Laden as possible. Did it look good? Yeah. Yeah. You can paint almost realistic? Well, so here's what I do. I, I draw it on first. That's what everyone pencil. does. Is it? I don't know how yeah. to paint. Yeah. So I just draw it on in, in, in pencil. Uh -huh. And then it's basically just like kind of like, you know, uh, uh, one of those fill in the colors kind of yeah. things. That's good. So, but I can't, I can't just go like boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden have it look like something. Like I got to draw it and everything. Yeah, that's, yeah. I made a chat person cry. Somebody keeps saying I made a chat person cry. What? Who? How? What are you talking about? With what? Sam the Newsboy. What are you talking about? Did we make somebody cry? I mean, people cry all the time. Um, yeah, so, I mean, did, does that, did we cover all the news? I don't know. We're all getting 600 bucks. That's cool. Sweet. What are you gonna uh, buy? Yeah, um, I guess this person's trolling me. Okay, I've been trolled. I've been trolled. Yeah. Uh, MF Doom died. We talked about that. Well, I love that we yeah. covered Alec Baldwin's fraud of a wife. I think that's so funny. Also, like, so what does this do to Alec Baldwin? Like, is he? What's the blowback? You know, because you know he must have been so pissed when this whole thing. He's like, I told you this was gonna happen. I told you it was gonna get. You know, it was gonna hit the papers. Like, no, he did a he did a video. Um, defending her. How do you defend it? What did he say? He was like, she's sort of Spanish. <laughs> yeah, but what about the accent? <laughs> oh my God. And I, so I, Go ahead. No, no I, th I think her family is, lives in Spain. So that was, that's the thing. It's but like they're she not would... Spanish, right? Because Sarah was saying like her grandparents were, like none of them were born in Spain. Like they're all American. Like she's fucking right. American. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Amazing. Everybody needs something to feel special. <laughs> that's such you a know? weird one to pick. I know. It's like, well, maybe I'll be Spanish. Yeah. yeah. My God. Um. Yeah. Anything? Anything else? Are we almost? It's almost time. Oh shit. Jis Lane. Um. What's her last name? Gielan Maxwell. G yeah. Is that how you say it? I think it's Gielan. I, I thought it was Jis Lane. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she, they said, no, you can't. You can't you go can't home? Bail. Yeah. <laughs> you can't go home. She's like, can what I go home? What are you talking about? Like, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I don't like it here. Unreal. Can I go home for a couple months before you make me stay here forever? <laughs> no. You did a bad thing. You did a weird bad thing. I hope they get to the bottom of what the fuck her deal is. Well, I feel like they did. I think we all what? know. What do you mean? What? Her, oh, like why she did it? Yeah, why? Oh, I bet I, I have no idea. Some says life in the jizz lane. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tom Hanks is bald. What does this mean? What's the yeah, meaning of this? He shaved his head. Oh, okay. Like, like I thought that meant he'd been wearing a toupee all along. He's been lying to us. Yeah. And he's also not Spanish. That's true. Oh, someone says deep boys. That's right. We've almost forgotten how to do the show. I know. Wait, somebody says, day. what is a good Western? I got to say, I watched Unforgiven again this week. Fuck, that's an amazing movie. When was the last time you saw Unforgiven? Mm, probably two years ago. You love it? Oh, yeah. Love it. 
Love Clint it. Eastwood's like my favorite celebrity. Really? Yeah. If I like Clint Eastwood is the celebrity that when he dies, I'll be I probably won't do it because I hate it when people do it. But I would be tempted to do like an earnest like post. Yeah. Nothing like, makes you know, my skin crawl more than this. I post. know. But I, and I, I probably won't do it. But that's the closest I would get to it. Yeah. Whenever a celebrity dies and these fucking people come out of the woodwork. And the worst is when someone who didn't really know the celebrity talks about that time they met him and they were cool. You yeah. Know, well, oh, no one, no one ever yourself. doesn't make it about themselves. Yeah. Like, they're like, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't watch, uh, you know, fucking wh- whoever. Like, you know, and it's like, where are you today? Dude, when Bill Murray dies, I'm just going to like bury my phone for a month. I don't want to fucking hear. Can you imagine all the fucking comedians that oh. are going to be like, he was Dead. the he was the, the the standard. Yeah. That's wow. uh, something I remember when Gene Wilder died, a comedian we know tweeted, he was like, he was the standard to which all other comedians are measured. I was like, go fuck yourself. The world lost a little bit of joy today. Yeah. Um also Paul McCartney when that guy dies. Oh, well, oh. I'll be really sad. It's just gonna be so annoying. It's gonna be like like I remember when the Pope died, I was like, fuck. This is going to go on forever. Like, you know. Dude, like, honestly, that, I, did, did the Pope die? Well, you know, the, the old one, the, the uh, old uh, Pope. When he died, it was like everything. That's all anyone talked about uh, for months. And it was like, he was old. Come on. Um, and no, like, I love Bill Murray. I'm just saying he's going to be a thing. Sorry. What celebrity I, death has hit you hard? David Bowie fucked with me. That, I was very sad when David Bowie died. I didn't think I would be, but I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I think Prince was the one that shocked me the most. Like, I was like, really? Prince? Yeah. Um, you know, that one. Um, I mean, uh, I'm not a huge basketball fan, but I thought, um, um, uh, obviously, because I'm blanking on his name now. Uh, Kobe? The guy, Kobe. Yeah, Kobe. <laughs> I thought that one was uh, very sad because yeah. his daughter was involved, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are saying Robin Williams. Yeah, that was sad. That was real fucking sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Phil Hartman. God, that's Phil Hartman hurts because it's like that guy, he had decades of funny left in him, you know? Right. Well, that's the old lesson. Don't marry a crazy psycho. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Yeah. Good call. Um, yeah, that one was bad. That was, that was like, uh, that was in high school. I was in high school. We were in high school for that, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and then Chris Farley died too, like around the same time. I yeah. It's like everybody, all of us Saturday Night Live people were dying. Yeah. Um, you know what's crazy is if you watch those old Dennis Miller ones. Yeah, why? Because he just does, like, I guess he thinks it's, I mean, his bit is that he makes obscure references. Mm-hmm. But that's like such a bad bit because it's like no one really gets your jokes. Yeah. Like he's like, he'll be like, he's always like talking about old history stuff that nobody knows. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, you're smart. Yeah. Like his whole thing was he was like so snarky. That was his shtick, right? He was just, yeah. 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 Um, some, oh, should we, uh, should we do Deep Boys? Yeah, man. But I don't know what to, what to, what to tackle with Deep Boys. I know. I'm not feeling very deep. Um, feeling kind of light and silly. <laughs> All right, good. Fuck it. We don't have to go deep. Um, um, talk about dealing with the reality of death. I'll tell you this. Okay. So oh, I watched that movie. Um, I'm thinking of ending things. Have you seen that? The new Charlie Kaufman movie on Netflix with Jesse Mm-mm. Plemons. It's, it's cool. I liked it. Um, it's and, like a new web series. No, it's a movie. I, I, I like just calling everything on Netflix a new web oh. series. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that new web series? Um, but he, he talks about aging in that movie, and it's the most depressing. It like almost sent me into like a real depression where he's like, he's just talking about how like life is like there is no fucking happy ending. You're getting older and older. Nothing's coming for you. You know, you're over the hill and we sell ourselves this bill of goods that like it's somehow going to get better. It's why would it get better? It's only going to get worse and your body's going to fail and people around you are going to die and then you're going to. It was just like, fuck, dude. 
Do you do you feel like that is a because it's true? Like a lot of that is true. Like, do you feel like you just stave that off uh, and don't acknowledge it with your mind, or do you feel like you grapple the reality that like things will decay until death, and that's what it is? Um, I don't. I'm not being very articulate. No, no, no. I get it. I get, yeah. Uh, I guess I'm asking: Do you block it or do you let it in? Well, I, I'm weird. Like I, I, um, I'm terrified of dying, you know. Um, but then I'm also kind of zen about it too. Uh, whereas I, I don't think you ever die from your own perspective. Um, right, because, because you were never born from your own perspective. Exactly. Well, you, you might have been born, but like you cannot, you cannot. Uh, you don't your, mourn your, your pre-life. Your consciousness cannot contain, cannot be in a space where it doesn't exist. Yeah. So, like, you know, when you're 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 sick, you know, you 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 you're sick, and and nowadays most people are like morphined up, you know, mm-hmm. when they when they die. So, like, you're pretty much your last things are just like you're sick. Hopefully, your family and loved ones are around, and then you kind of go to sleep, you know, like, but you're not dying, you know, yeah. and and so you never really, you never die in your own yeah. perspective. So I think that's a little uh, comforting. Have you, you heard know? that your brain releases a massive amount of DMT upon upon death? So your final conscious thought is like some crazy psychedelic trip. Yes. Yeah. Do you think that's true? Yeah. It's it, it floods it when you're born, and it floods it when you die. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, I'll take it. Unless you get yeah. fucking shotgun Kurt Cobain style in the head, you don't get that. You know. No, but then it's just. That's yeah. pretty immediate. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, but also, I don't think. I think you're kind of, you know. Hopefully, you, um, you know, like the idea of dying when I was in my twenties uh-huh. terrified me more than it does now. Um, and I, I hope that it that just keeps going. Yeah, you know, because like. When you talk to, I mean, everyone's different, but, you know, the old people that I've known, you know, it doesn't seem to bother them that much. You know, they don't want to die, but they're just like, and you also, that whole thing about, um, you know, your friends dying and, you know, uh, everyone dying around you, that probably prepares you for it as well. You know, if all your friends have died and you're like, well, I guess it's time for me to die. Like, I don't know. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but, you know, hopefully it, uh, you know, you're, Ready for it. I don't know. What about you? I don't know. I, I Part of me is like, I don't really care about death so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, to me, I just care about like living a, a wasted life. But like death, I feel like if I was like, if I was pushed out of an airplane and I was like in free fall and I was like, oh, I'm going to die. I, I really do think I could just be like, okay. Yeah. You know, I think That's I think I'd just be like, all right, it's done. I don't I know. I think that's good. I think so. I think it's a healthy way to look at it. Yeah. I'm just afraid because of 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 my upbringing. It's instilled in me the idea the, the idea of eternity terrifies me. Mm. Like the idea. But you don't really of, believe in eternity. I hope there's not eternity. Right. Um. You know. But um. But I don't know. Like uh. You know. So that that kind of that 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 will scare me. Um. But also, I don't know. Are you going to raise your kid with any sort of spiritual guidance? Um, is Sunday school know. in his future? No, I don't think I'll go to Sunday school. You know, but I like. Are you going to um, read him the Bible? No, I mean, I, I think it would kind of like you know, if he's into something. But what kids get into the Bible? Like you know, um, <laughs> creepy kids. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I I think there's good things about it. Uh-huh. You know, like, you know, um, I think you, you, but if you can instill some sort of morality and some sort of compass in a kid, um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, hey, I think I'll tell them right and wrong. Sure. But th- that's just, but then that's just, I'll, I'll basically tell him what, uh, I'll let, I'll let his mom do it. <laughs> She's, she'll be a better moral compass than me. <laughs> Like, I was so angry for so long that, like, I was forced to go to church so much as a kid, you know? And I, I was, like, so resentful that, mm-hmm. like, 
they, you know, they, they forced this spiritual blueprint into my like, you know, young, limitless mind. And like, and I felt like I had to like undo that before I could really ever, you know, find my own way. And I was so fucking bitter. And right. I kind of like closed the book on like spiritual curiosity when I was like 16. You know, I was like, I kind of made up my mind. It was like all just reactionary. And then it wasn't until like 35 when I got sober that I had to like have a new way of thinking. And I realized I'm like 35 with a 16 year old's attitude, you know, about this stuff. I had to like start over again. And like, right. And it's, but now I actually think like I'm, in a weird way, I'm like glad that I, I was given all that stuff, even though I didn't want to as a kid, um, because I just feel like I have this like understanding of how those that mentality operates. You know, it's like learning a, a second language when you're really young. It's just like you get mm-hmm. it. It's like and it's quick and easy. I don't know. Yeah. So I feel like I can I can understand. It's such a huge part of how so many people behave around us. And it's I'm so massive. I, I'm glad it's I such can, a massive. Yeah, it's such a massive thing in in this country. Yeah, you know, to be like, oh, I get that, I get what they're, I get, I get why they're acting that way. Yeah, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was weird because my mom and I, like, when I was in my twenties, I, I multiple times I would like read her the riot act, be like about how fucking she blew it, you know, and and like all that. And like two years ago, I like wrote her a letter. Where I was like, you know, I don't think that way anymore. And now I'm like really grateful that, 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 you know, I had the experiences through this that I did. And, you know, it mm-hmm. wasn't wasted energy and blah, blah, blah. Um, Do you think she told your grandfather? <laughs> no, but she and that's my dad's dad. And they are oh. not friends. So, no. Oh. But that would be so funny. He's so like, how well, much he doesn't was get the- any Christmas money. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, he doesn't believe then there is no Christmas for him. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that was kind of deep, boys. We kind of did it. It's yeah, time. It's, yeah, it's we're, nine. We're, we're, we're easing back into it. Yeah. This was good. This was good news, boys. Good show. Um, we never miss. We never miss. We never will. Uh, Ermagard donated another five bucks. Says Russia had Hitler's remains for like seventy years, and then DNA testing proved it wasn't him. Wasn't even a dude. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> M12 Hitler- Sarge. Thank you. Dude, I watched a Netflix documentary one time and I got convinced for like two hours that Hitler was uh, not dead. I've been convinced of that. I feel like I've read something that made me think like, what the fuck? I was like, that sneaky motherfucker got away. He, He's in Argentina. He was such a junkie, man. Like He liked meth, right? Meth. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Wasn't like Kennedy. Everyone was on meth back then, though. I don't like, think they, Kennedy they, was, was he? Yeah, they gave him like, you know, because he had his back was all fucked up because like, um, because he like fell off a submarine. I forget the story. There was something like um, he was like a hero because he fell off a submarine and he saved somebody. Um, and uh, so his back was all fucked. So they would back then they would uh, like, I don't think they knew meth was bad. So they were just like, oh, this is like a like a, the doctor would give you meth. And they're like, it's great. You can stand. You can stay up all night planning government things or whatever. And so I feel like everybody was on that ship. Jesus. I know. Well, remember there's that scene in Mad Men. I don't know if you watch that show where they get like a shot in their ass. Some guy comes to the office and gives them like a, a B12 shot or something. And everyone's just running around like in hyperspeed. Yeah. yeah I guess. Yeah. But yeah. doesn't meth just make you jerk off in hotel rooms? <laughs> it makes you collect broken electronics. Yeah. I feel like that's <laughs> and draw what like, mazes. like TV is always like meth. Like you, you watch Breaking Bad and they're like... <laughs> You know, yeah. and it's like that. But then, like, whenever you, like, find out about, like, somebody doing methods, they just go to a fucking hotel and, like, fucking jerk off for hours. Does meth make you super horny? Is that a part I of it? I think so. I think so. Oh. Yeah. And it's like, and you got to go jerk off because you can't pick up somebody when you're on meth. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, and it also fucks your face up. Your face looks weird. You remember when we uh, uh, we played in uh, um, oh we've told this story Sparks. right Sparks in, Sparks Nevada <laughs> Jesus yeah. the whole town was on meth that place sucks um, so hard um all right someone says yeah my ex was a meth junkie total jerk off oh okay uh the um what was I gonna say about 
Remember that news anchor that died uh, two years ago? No. And on uh, TV? No, he died on Christmas Day, um, and he was uh, they he he. He was the news anchor, like the KTLA guy or something like that. Yes. And then on Christmas Day, he went to a hotel, met a dude there, and they put all this meth into a gas mask. I remember and, that. And then he died because he did too much meth from the gas mask. I didn't even know you could die from doing too much meth. Like, I, I didn't know that was an OD drug. What a um, fucking crazy life that guy lives. Yeah. And, they, and, and the other thing, the thing that stuck in my head about it was there were like, yeah, it was him, this other guy, a gas mask full of meth in a motel room, and a and a disco ball. <laughs> he brought the disco ball and hung yeah. it up in the hotel. I was like, this will be awesome. That's amazing, dude. <laughs> that detail. And like they, they put that in and I was like, uh, there's something. Yeah, that guy, that guy fucking lived, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh all right, dude. Oh, did you see that guy get hit with an iced tea can? No. No. Oh wait, the guy did he pick it up off the ground and smash the dude in the face and yeah. line at the seven? Was it? I watched the video with no audio. Was it because the the guy wasn't wearing a mask? Is that what? No, he, he was saying the n word. Oh shit! Okay. He kept saying the n word, and it's a great video. Um, I, it is anyways, a great video. I watched so it this, like five times. Look, I, this is allegedly. I don't know. I don't know the guy. Uh, it looked like he was on meth, <laughs> and um, and he was like, so he's like calling this guy the n-word and the guy's like don't call me the n-word he was like i'll call you the n-word all day and then he's like and and then he's like he holds the iced tea can and this is the best part the the meth dude goes like what are you gonna hit me with it he goes hit me hit me right here man like and he's like hit me i want you to hit me and then the guy just fucking (laughs) one of the greatest lays him out it is so satisfying. It's so good. It, oh. yeah. Should we watch it? Should I put that on? We oh, gotta watch. I, it. I mean, I I, I, I know love, you I, can't, but I feel like we can't talk about it and not show it. So let's see if I can find this thing. It's so good. Um. Oh, that's right. It says the N word. You can't show it. Well, I can do it with no audio. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, it's so man. good. Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, 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 God, oh. I, c- I couldn't hit the volume button in time. He says it right at the top, dude. <laughs> he says it right at the top. I tried not to. All right, we're done. We're done with that. Uh, uh, the other guys are going to be so mad that we nuked the Twitch <laughs> channel. Oh, well. Oh, boy. oh, man. Chat's really going off on this one. Yeah, what do we do? How do we do it? Would we just like immediately take this off? I, throw, but throw you know what's fucked up is I want to try it again. I feel like I can learn from my mistake. There's got to be a way. If you mute one YouTube video, will the next one be muted? Will it apply? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's still here. Yeah, well, that was a different video. So let me jump to another one before I go to it. Yeah, yeah, it's muted. Okay, I can do it. Okay, okay. okay. Ice tea fight. Watch the volume come right back on. <laughs> okay, no, it's muted. It's muted. All right, hang on. Let's watch this shit. You, you, Trevor, Someone I says, guess you won't be able to see it uh, or hear it, but but uh, I'll I'll go. It'll be like Grizzly Man. I'll just look at your reaction. <laughs> All right, hang on a second. Let me close these emails. I don't need to see that. Oh my God, here we go. But I love it. He's like, hit me right here. Oh, he looks like such an asshole too. He looks like everyone I grew up with. He's definitely on meth. Oh, God. And is that his buddy to the left with the mask on? It looks like that's like his friend. He's like, Jeremy, come on, dude. No, I think he's just kind of like... I don't think this dude has friends. Oh, here he goes. Now he's doing... He's like putting his stuff down. He's like, hit me! Hit me! Oh, yeah. yeah. Boom! Oh, um, the dude... Oh, he drops the can. Oh, God! <laughs> Fantastic. Wow. And the, the whole world is, was rooting for that man to do exactly what he did. Afterwards, he goes like, You good? You good? You good? <laughs> the guy keeps saying that. Oh, the, the, the white guy is saying, You yeah. good? <laughs> you good? You good? What does that mean, you good? I don't know. Oh, it's just, it's so good. Oh my God. That oh. 
That's so funny. Yeah, if you want to find the video, look up Twisted Tea. That's what the video is I called. I mean, I because... searched Ice Tea Fight and it came right Ice up. Ice Tea Fight. It's so yeah. good. Um, all right. All right, dude. Rock and roll. Good news, boys. Great. I'll good see you tomorrow, Self Suck Saturday, right? Yep. All right. We'll, we'll do see it you again. All tomorrow. Thanks, guys. We appreciate all the support. Yeah. Um, Thanks, thank everyone who donated. Make this. Yes, thank yeah. you. All right, later, dude. See you guys soon. Bye. Uh, if you guys want to raid, I'll do a raid if y'all want to do that. Oh, hang on now. Hold on. I know you can't see it. Let me just... There you go. Now you can look at my beautiful face. Who do we want to raid, guys? Somebody throw some names out there. Raid Fantastic Plastics. All right, let's look at that. Is that a thing? Fantastic plastics. It's a music thing. 158 people. That looks good. Let's do that. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think we raided these people before. It was fun. Please not cranky old dude again. No, we're not doing that. I don't know who that is. Um, we're doing fantastic plastics. All right, you guys. First of wires. We'll do... Eh, I already started it. We're doing this. Later, guys. See you all tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for donating. Thanks for gifting the subs. Appreciate you all. Love you, dudes. Peace. And end the screen.